Hi. This is Novel Admire. Welcome to my channel. Have fun. Running away from the hero. Chapter 0, Prologue. Prologue. Humans. Compared to other species, humans were extremely weak. If one were to set this species as the standard, one would immediately realize that there weren't a lot of species that were weaker than humans. After all, humans didn't have the strength akin to that of orcs, nor did they have the talent for magic that elves had, nor did they have a dwarf's crafting skills. But strangely enough, the world revolved around humans. Disregarding the demon continent that was ruled by the demon race, around 70% of the world was ruled by humans. Even when you take into account the fact that other races weren't greedy and only focused on living by themselves, one simply has to question why humans own so much land. Well, this line of thought would be normal for most, but this wasn't what I thought at all. You see, I happen to think that humans were beings specifically made for battle. Not many species ever get into conflict with each other frequently. The most infighting you'd see is in their imperial courts. But humans are different. Why was strategy created in the first place? To fight species stronger than humans? To defend themselves against the demon season, an event where the demon king revives? No, all wrong. Visit dot, for the best no underscore vol underscore read underscoring experience, it was to fight humans. The infighting within the imperial palaces around the world was a regular event that takes place every year. And every 10 years, some two countries would enter a war against each other. Unlike other species, who fight a hundred versus hundred at most, humans fight with massive numbers. There are even times when an army of million would fight an army of similar numbers as well. But this isn't the only reason why I'm saying that humans are the species born for battle. It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, please support our site by disabling your ad blocker. We depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. This is the end. Goo-oo-oo-oo. A black dragon roared in pain in front of me. Dragon. The strongest species that existed in this world. Even high demons hesitated fighting it, and even the demon kind that lived on the other continent trembled before its power. It was a being that lived for thousands of years, and was even titled the Master of Magic. And currently, this Master of Magic was being brutally beat up. The latest underscore underscore sodes are on underscore the dot website. By the hands of a human. It wasn't as if the dragon was young, either. A thousand years. The time it takes for an empire to rise and fall. Only after this time would a dragon become an adult. In human standards, a dragon less than a thousand years is pretty much like a preschool child who isn't worth talking about anything with. Compared to that, the black dragon was an infamous high dragon. In other words, it was a dragon that lived for at least 10,000 years that got recognized for its power by other dragons. Compared to that, the one who was beating up the dragon was a human. Young, too. 25 at best. Seeing how the cutoff for high dragons was an age of 20,000 years, the dragon was getting floored by someone 800 times weaker than it. Indeed, it is as you think, reader. Inside humans lay. A piece of DNA that allowed humans to fight beings like dragons and demon kings, just like the piece of DNA that allowed science to turn into super science. In other words, humans had the potential to become heroes. Sir Hero. There even was a princess from a neighboring country faithfully fulfilling her role as the extra. It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, please support our site by disabling your ad blocker. We depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. I, who too was spectating the battle between the dragon and the hero like the sobbing princess, felt liquid pour out not out of my eyes, but my back. As I felt the sweat collect, I prayed. Fight hard, dragon.
Visit. For a better underscore user experience, I was planning on running away after sticking the hero in some hospital of some sorts. Just why do you think I brought the hero all the way out here? To think. To think I, Arctai, would die in the hands of a human. But unfortunately, the dragon ended up dying. And the hero, who achieved this enormous feat, took out the sword from the dead dragon and bowed towards me. It was as you said, teacher. No, this was all done thanks to your efforts. No, your W.R. Muck? Sir Hero. The hero's words of denial was interrupted by the stereotypical hug from the princess. As I watched the hero become flustered, I felt more sweat run down my back than ever. Damn it. M. N. Why am I sweating so hard when the hero won, you ask? Why is it a problem that the hero is my disciple? The latest underscore underscore sods are on underscore the dot website. Well, you see, my dear reader, this is all very simple when you think about it. It's because I'm a villain. Chapter 1 I didn't know back then, 1. Normally, when you look into a fantasy light novel, the main character would either get a special weapon, a special skill, or in some cases, the main character would even drag a goddess with him, doesn't seem all that useful, though. Or in sometimes, the main character already happened to be learning magic, and would get transported into a world that had a very primitive form of magic. In some other cases, the main character would actually reincarnate as a monster like a slime or a goblin, and still manage to wreck shit. But, my dear readers, this is all fiction. It ain't real. It works quite a lot like fiction in dramas. You don't meet rich ass sons of bitches just by bumping shoulders with them on the street. We all know this is all just bull. No way these rich kids would be eating shit Odin in a random food cart, or eat out in a hole in the wall restaurant. Nope, that kind of stuff never happens in real life. I don't know specifically what kind of steak they eat, and in which five star hotel they eat it at but I know for sure that these people don't go around food carts eating cheap food. Oh well, I suppose the part of the dramas that's actually fictional is the main heroine being some sort of a legendary creature that was an orphan beauty who went through all kinds of hardships in life. Well, whatever. Back to our talk about the BS in fantasy stories. Take a look at this load of bull. In a lot of light novels, main characters are able to understand the languages of the world they reincarnate in. Hell, even in our world, there are hundreds of different languages that get spoken in one continent. Why would the people in a different dimension of all things all universally speak Korean? Well, in reality, they don't. Because of this, I had to spend five years of my life learning how to speak. Normally in this world, kids would speak by the age of three, and learn how to write by the age of 5. I became able to write properly by the age of 10. My parents almost decided that I was hopelessly stupid by that time. Thankfully, I managed to change their minds with my math skills. But this was a world that recognized kids as a math was as long as they could add and subtract pretty well. People in my village almost thought I was a genius at math because I was able to multiply and divide. And as for the knowledge I had other than math. All useless. There were no computers, so my knowledge in computers were all gone to shit. I spent half of my life in a place called school, but in the end, the only thing that became useful was knowing how to add and subtract. Truly, the Korean education system was total trash. And once again, I was reminded that fiction, in the end, was fiction. Yeah, modern knowledge. It's pretty useful. But so what? Knowing what a chair looks like, and knowing how to make a chair are two totally different things. The specialized tools to make a chair are not impossible to recreate in this world. If making just a chair is this hard, how much effort do you think goes into making a gun? Even if you know what guns look like, how would you create the parts of the guns? If you don't have the skills, all you have are dreams. Even if you know about something that already exists, it just ends up becoming a part of your imagination. In the end, I decided to inherit my parents' farm. 
the knowledge I accumulated in school was useless, but the skills I accumulated in the military weren't. As expected of Korea's brutal military training. Korea's most advanced form of weaponry, the shovel, applied in just about any situation. My skills in using the shovel almost made my father say you truly were a child born to shovel. Really, all my talents lay in farming. I used to have those moments in life. When I was 13, my parents passed away. The reason? An evil wizard's experiment. That wasn't it. The whims of a corrupt noble. That wasn't it either. The demons that wrecked havoc during the demon season. Nope. Their true cause of death was electrocution. An evil wizard blocked a magic spell from the hero, and the remnants of it happened to bounce off to my parents. Just like the innocent cars that randomly hit each other and explode in action movies during a car chase, my parents died while trying to pay taxes and sell their crops in the city. To think I'd be this unlucky. I wondered for a bit how I should lead my life as the new family head, but in the end, I decided to farm. After all, the country still paid me some reparations for the damages, right? I still have land and crops to back me up. There was a time when I thought that, too. Ho ho. I could only laugh as I watched my crops burn. It's been a year since my parents died. It's been only a year, and our feudal lord just decided to give me a big fuck you. Rather, he gave the country a big fuck you. A gold mine was found on the borders between our nation and some other nation, and that place happened to be close to our fief. Our lord, after getting several suggestions from his subordinates, decided to conquer the mines. He defeated the troops stationed there by a fief lord from a different country. Right. So far, this seems to be all good. But the fief lord became overexcited by taking over the gold mines and charged into the country across the border. The fact of the matter was, that country across the border happened to be the empire, the strongest nation in the continent. Our fief lord, who had believed that his army had been blessed by the gods, got got pathetically killed by the enemy. At the same time, the empire took this as a declaration of war, and attacked the nation the very next day. They managed to topple the capital in two months. Visit. For the best no underscore vol underscore read underscoring experience, ah, by the way, the sea of flames in front of me was caused by the empire, who decided to make an example out of those who acted out against the empire. They set fire to the lands of our fief, and my land happened to be in it. That's right. Farming just went to shit. Fall was still quite far away, but I couldn't farm using just ashes. Q. That's why. That's why the reason why I became a gangster was because of the world. I wanted peace, but the world didn't let me have it. Ah, and by the way, I'm not one of those lone sharks or anything. I just mug people. I have no idea if this is really a good thing or not, but the nation I lived in ended up getting split into seven pieces. Originally, the empire took only a fourth of the nation, but the king ended up getting into a coma from shock and the princes ended up fighting for the throne. A count even managed to join the battle for power at some point. In any case, at a time like this, a lot of people decided to either turn into bandits or thieves. I had pretty decent sword skills, so I decided to earn cash from that. I was thinking of going to the empire once I had enough cash. I teamed up with one or two people and sometimes collaborated with other groups I shared info with to raid some villages. Sometimes I got together with some old bandits and a noble to beat up some nobles as well. Once I earned enough money like this, and began searching for a smuggler to get me into the empire, someone came to meet me. How is it? I was being scouted. Ho ho, I remember working myself to the bone, close to the point where I actually died in the past. Even then, I wasn't scouted because I had no talent at what I did. I do some bad things, and wazam, someone comes to get me in a red carpet. From the biggest evil organization in the empire at that. It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, please support our site by disabling your ad blocker. 
we depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. The pay is pretty good. Incentives are nice as well. Seems pretty dangerous. Well, it's similar to what you're doing now. Do I have to kill myself if they tell me to do so? Yes. You just need to be careful, though. I need to really put my life on the line. But unlike my previous life in hellish Korea, the pay was actually good. Enough to make me want to risk my life. I'll do it. Like this, I, a to be 15 year old, joined an evil organization. With this, my age became 40. I spent 25 years of my life dedicated to the organization. I took a pretty safe job of an instructor. I currently have a job of a senior instructor, training young trainees in the way of evil. Ah, this is the life. No risk of dying, good pay, really good incentives to boot. Evil organizations are the best, everybody. I'll go with the format from before. I'll take 1 through 50, and 950 to 1000. The other instructors all shut their mouths when I said this. You're taking the top ones as well? That am the lowest ones. Can't you just take the children in the middle ranks? The other instructors voice their dissent. But I had made my decision already. Visit dot, for the best no underscore vol underscore read underscoring experience, 1 through 50, and 950 to 1000. There are a few people like me who get scouted to the organization, but most of the members of the organization who get in begin as either orphans or slaves. We train these kids for about two years. We feed them and beat them until they become fit enough to become proper members of the organization. That is our job as instructors. Among all these thousand kids, the ones I like best are the first 50, and the last 50. The kids at the very front are the cream of the crop. The worst among them are still good enough to pass as a middle class member of the organization. Sometimes, you'll even find geniuses among them. The incentive for training them is low though. That's why I fill that gap with the last 50 of the group to cancel out the disadvantages of training the geniuses. A lot of the kids from the last 50 are useless, but sometimes you end up getting one of them to the top, and the incentive you get from that is immense. As a result, my rank as an instructor goes up, and the number of zeros in the incentive I get increases by one. That's why I always pick the first 50 and the last 50. The ones who are tenacious among all these kids always survive anyway. And my method of education allows kids to always survive as long as they can endure. Other instructors manage to kill tens of kids every time they pick trainees, but I manage to become a model instructor with zero casualties under my belt. There's a reason why I'm a senior instructor. They say there are quite a lot of talented kids in this group, so. I expect about five would survive. The quality of this group's pretty damn high, so I'm thinking about 10. The last group was said to be the best in the history of the organization, and only 7 survived. Well, Naruin's training is quite infamous for being brutal, after all. But the kids in this group probably have their pride, don't you think? If everyone other than 5 or 7 gets knocked out again, they'd be completely useless. I'm betting on their tenaciousness. 30,000 gold on having 10 survive. Ho ho, going strong, aren't you? 40,000 on 5. 20,000 on 7. 30,000 on 5 as well. I'll try. 30,000 on complete annihilation. But it seemed that the other instructors didn't really have the mindset of a model instructor like me. Just look, to think they'd be betting on how many of the kids I pick would survive. How many do you think would survive, senior instructor? One of the instructors asked the question towards me. How many would survive? It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, please support our site by disabling your ad blocker. We depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. As long as they're tenacious, they'll survive. Dot tenacious, is it?
I don't push people until they die. The ones that don't last are the strange ones. Right. I'm not the strange one here, the ones who don't survive are strange. Yes. As long as one is tenacious, one will get strong. That's right. After all, I, a person without mana, survived this long in a world of magic where elves and orcs thrive. Seriously, if you don't manage to survive even when you have mana, you're just strange. I've lived 30 years in my past life, and lived 40 in this life. I've managed to survive 70 years just by working my ass off. Number 1 Their story, a certain trainee, this is crazy. Absolutely crazy. Maddening, almost. Visit dot, for the best no underscore vol underscore read underscoring experience, ho oh, oh, they did mention that you were one of the best groups in history. I suppose they were right, seeing how well you kids are doing. Magic was raining down from the skies. Only five days after the start of the higher class training, 30 people survived. On the midnight of the first day, the sudden magic bombing on our sleeping quarters knocked out half of the group. The length of time we've survived for during this five days was still quite long, I've heard, but even then, we were reaching the limit. I have high expectations for this batch. I could see Instructor Narwin, who was talking to the communication wizard to direct the bombings every once in a while with an emotionless face. I had heard that he was the one who shaped most of the powerhouses in the current organization by himself. I had heard that I might get the chance to become one of those people. But whenever I heard those words, the other instructors all smirked and said this, even so, it's usually about 1 in 20 who make it to the top. Sometimes, it's 1 out of 50, most of them come back next year to be trained again. When I heard those words, I thought that I'd become one of those succeeding people. I had cast away my war-torn village to step into the path of darkness. My resolve was different from the kids who had come here because they had no choice. In fact, this resolve of mine allowed me to rank 27 out of a thousand other children. But still. Isn't this really too much? I went to sleep, excited about what I was to learn the very next day. In the moment I closed my eyes, a siren went off and our living quarters were destroyed within a minute. I come out confused and lost, and I'm told that if I don't make it to a specific location within a set time, I'm out. The thing I've heard when I arrived at the location was perhaps the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Ooh. I've heard 49 had survived the first attack, but to think 49 would be here as well. As an instructor, I am exceedingly happy. I am so, so, so ooh, ooh happy, in fact, it feels like I might as well be crying tears of joy right now. His delighted voice didn't fit his cold expression at all. His chilly eyes and trembling lips almost suggested that he was restraining his laughter. Ah, it is said that the teachings of a teacher is akin to the heavens itself, but to think you'd make me cry. The gods above must be crying in joy with me as well. Naruin looked up as if he was waiting for something, then looked down at us again. Right. It seems that the tears of the heavens would be falling upon us soon, so prepare your umbrellas. The first thing I had in my mind was, was he crazy? There were not a single clouds in the sky. There didn't seem to be any sign of rain. Plus. The umbrella that was provided for us was more like a wooden branch. It was incapable of blocking a single drop of water. Dot hold on, this is? The one who rid me of my confusion was a high-pitched voice. When I turned around, I could see a girl ranked 10 ranks higher than me, trainee number 17. Oh. So there's already someone who can recognize the umbrella. Things will be simple, then. Snap. The moment Naruin snapped his fingers, someone appeared next to him. Visit dot, for the best no underscore vol underscore read underscoring experience, please make it rain here. It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, please support our site by disabling your ad blocker. We depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. At the same time, 
silver rain began to fall upon us. Chapter 2 1. I didn't know then, 2. Number 1 Their story, a certain trainee this is crazy. Absolutely crazy. Maddening, almost. Ho oh, oh, they did mention that you were one of the best groups in history. I suppose they were right, seeing how well you kids are doing. Magic was raining down from the skies. Only five days had passed since the start of the higher class training, and thirty people had survived. On the midnight of the first day, the sudden magic bombing on our sleeping quarters knocked out half of the group. The length of time we've survived for during this five days was still quite long, I've heard, but even then, we were reaching the limit. I have high expectations for this batch. I could see Instructor Naruin, who was talking to the communication wizard to direct the bombings every once in a while with an emotionless face. I had heard that he was the one who shaped most of the powerhouses in the current organization by himself. I had heard that I might get the chance to become one of those people. But whenever I heard those words, the other instructors all smirked and said this, even so, it's usually about 1 in 20 who make it to the top. Sometimes, it's 1 out of 50, most of them come back next year to be trained again. When I heard those words, I thought that I'd become one of those succeeding people. I had cast away my war-torn village to step into the path of darkness. My resolve was different from the kids who had come here because they had no choice. In fact, this resolve of mine allowed me to rank 27 out of a thousand other children. But still. Isn't this really too much? I went to sleep, excited about what I was to learn the very next day. In the moment I closed my eyes, a siren went off and our living quarters were destroyed within a minute. I come out confused and lost, and I'm told that if I don't make it to a specific location within a set time, I'm out. The thing I've heard when I arrived at the location was perhaps the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Ooh. I've heard 49 had survived the first attack, but to think 49 would be here as well. As an instructor, I am exceedingly happy. I am so, so, so ooh ooh happy, in fact, it feels like I might as well be crying tears of joy right now. His delighted voice didn't fit his cold expression at all. His chilly eyes and trembling lips almost suggested that he was restraining his laughter. Ah, it is said that the teachings of a teacher is akin to the heavens itself, but to think you'd make me cry. The gods above must be crying in joy with me as well. Naruin looked up as if he was waiting for something, then looked down at us again. Right. It seems that the tears of the heavens would be falling upon us soon, so prepare your umbrellas. The first thing I had in my mind was, was he crazy? There were not a single clouds in the sky. There didn't seem to be any sign of rain. Plus, the umbrella that was provided for us was more like a wooden branch. It was incapable of blocking a single drop of water. Dot hold on, this is? The one who rid me of my confusion was a high-pitched voice. When I turned around, I could see a girl ranked 10 ranks higher than me. Trainee number 17. Oh. So there's already someone who can recognize the umbrella. This'll be simple, then. Snap. The moment Naruin snapped his fingers, someone appeared next to him. The latest underscore underscore sods are on underscore the dot website. Make it rain. At the same time, silver rain began to fall upon us. From Tien was mostly it's just translations back in the day, I just tweaked a few lines. It's as nerve-wracking as ever. When a new semester starts, did my old principal feel like this when he made the same speech he always did? But to think he could still continue with such boring words despite that, as I thought, the job of principal isn't something just anyone can do. You'd probably need at least a my thrill grade thick face to be a principal. Although all I did was walk up to the pedestal, a hundred pairs of eyes all came to focus on me. There are some excited ones, nervous ones, and some completely emotionless ones. It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, please support our site by disabling your ad blocker. 
We depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. Well, not that it matters. Grow like weeds and become my incentive. Is just about all I feel from that. Now, my fresh hatchlings with eggshell still stuck on your feathers, welcome. I am the one in charge of Squad 1, Instructor Naruin. I could see some of them looking discontent at being called hatchlings. Those are probably the ones who had their heads high from their pretty high prelim ranks. But it's rare that top in primary school ends up being top in high school. Of course, it's not like the skills from having your nose buried in your desk since primary school would have gone anywhere. That's not how talent works. Starting suddenly and overturning the standards of normality. That is the realm of genius. It doesn't seem like there are any geniuses among this lot, but there will definitely be someone who will rise to their talents and overturn the previous order. Other instructors start training from today, but just for today. I'll be giving you kids the day off. If I talk any more, my mouth will hurt and you'll all only get pissed off. Go to your assigned dorms and for today, enjoy your day off. After a moment of silence, the kids walked away happily as I watched over them and gently smirked. As expected of an evil organization. They didn't even give those kids a proper break. But I'm different. I let them rest the moment they came. Where else are you going to find an instructor like me? Dot. Is this the infamous Last Supper? But even while looking at my kindly smile, the organization's personnel who had come to help with tomorrow's training, for some reason or another, all had their faces turning pale. What was it? Was there something wrong with lunch? It's not their last. I haven't had anyone die on me in my training course yet. That's true. They won't die. Although her words left a sour taste in my mouth I'm not going to ask any further. Visit dot, for the best no underscore vil underscore read underscoring experience normally in an evil organization there's no real sense of camaraderie between colleagues. Evil organizations that pointlessly insist on that tend to have all their members drawn in like sausages if so much as one of them get caught, so long-running evil organizations always live with the determination to abandon each other at any moment. Because of that even when you need the cooperation with other branches, any of them could equally be enemies looking for an opportunity to stick their knives in your backs, and to prevent that you need to be pretty social even in an evil organization. And in front of my eyes is one of the great peaks of the must-be-friends list. The famous magician brigade. The moment you get on the bad side of either the mage core that can blast away the enemy with accurate and heavy firepower, or any of the treasury staff that guarantee your salary and operating overheads you might as well half kiss your organization life goodbye already. When you desperately raised your budget but the treasury worker that you were on bad terms with slashed your budget by half, or when the mage corps that promised to help out say they couldn't come because they were busy, of course it would have a massive impact on your job. Let's get ready, shall we? Understood. Even so, according to the organization's official hierarchy I'm quite high up. As the magician nodded in response to my words and vanished, I checked the time. Current time 1400 hours. There's 10 hours left till the day ends. I definitely said that you kids could rest just for today. You know? Number 2. Their story, a certain mage's story. Boss, is this really training for kids? As a mage of howling, a place far removed from justice and light, and far closer to darkness and evil, I've done plenty of things that shouldn't have been done. If I was assigned a target then I would spare no means or effort to do the job, and if needed I'd even casually annihilated a village or two. With scores of experience in killing yesterday's ally turn traitor, but this was weird, even for myself who had done all those things. If it's the Empire style carpet bombing, then not even the organization's special forces can block that. The very first day of the timetable and it's already absolutely insane. It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, Please support our site by disabling your ad blocker.
We depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. The tactic that the Mad Witch of the Empire had devised during the last Great War. The theory behind it was simple. A mage would head up to 5,000 meters above sea level and create ice by freezing water vapor with ice magic, then drop it, simple as that, but the results were anything but. A 30,000 strong force of the Murdia Kingdom which was at odds with the Empire was annihilated with this simple tactic and 5,000 of them died. The magic barrier of the mages and archmages were torn to shreds by the simple concepts of mass and velocity, and even before Murdia's soldiers could send out their mages to hunt hours, the troops led by the Mad Witch attacked the capital in chaos. The battle where just 10,000 of that Mad Witch's forces more or less massacred 30,000 of the military kingdom Murdia's forces is already scheduled to be immortalized in the Empire's history books. But that is going to be fired on these kids who've barely passed their preliminary training. You'll have to control it well. Boss. Even a pebble will break skulls if they're dropped from 5,000 meters above sea level. Indeed. So the kids will need have the mindset that they need to dodge well. Visit. For a better underscore user experience if they can't dodge they'll die. Even if the turnover rate is only slightly lower than the Empire's during their slaughter happy moments, I can't see this wastage of human resources like this. My conscience hadn't run so dry to send these innocent kids to a dog's death. But even in the face of my pleas the boss's answer was unchanging. They're not going to die. No. To be precise, his eyes were dead and lifeless. Dot is it an order from the top? It is and one from Instructor Narun's direct disciples. Instructor Narun's direct disciple. The Empire, no, the continent's evil organization's training facilities each had their own specific works, but what they all had in common was that each batch would have a hundred people in them. Of course, not all of the hundred were trained perfectly. Some places 50, some places 70, some places 30. Depending on the training there were a lot of trainees that died, and there were also some training schools where more died than graduated. But even in amongst all those, Instructor Narun's trainees were regarded as incomparable. The reason being, very simply, that each time, no more than a single digit number of trainees ever completed the full course. Organization or no, an instructor like that should be fired but there was a reason why he could still hold his position as an instructor. That was because all the trainees who survived his training took the top positions of the organization with overwhelming strength and speed. Especially the class just before the one regarded as the greatest ever, currently all the disciples from that squad broke record after record and all of them took vital roles in the organization's military, diplomacy, internal affairs, treasury and so on. And even so, each and every of them were so talented that blew away all their subordinates' doubts. This is what the intelligence vice director says. They will feel like dying, but they won't die. They won't die, but they'll at least be able to tour heaven. While being a tourist in heaven is possible, where you will end up is hell. Is it just me that I'm even more worried after hearing that? Even if we say anything the higher-ups won't listen. Since it went without a hitch last year, all we can do is just do as we're told. Looking at my bosses sighing back, I sighed as well. He was still one of the organization's greats as the boss of the battle mages, but even so, he was just a salaried villain. The start time is oh 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 hours. The code word is make it rain. We just have to be ready to fire tomorrow at oh one oh oh hours. We can only hope and pray they don't die. It leaves a bitter taste in our mouths but what can we do? If we were going to argue about those things then we should be working for the Empire, not an evil organization. Please. We can only hope that no one dies. Is that really the case? There are times when death can be a more peaceful rest. Looking at the boss's oddly bitter smile, all I could do was pray for the trainees who would fall into despair in a few short hours. Chapter 3, 1. I didn't know then. 3. Silver rain falling from the sky.
The moonlight flickered off the small fragments as they fell down to where everyone was, and the sight of objects being crushed under their fall was truly spectacular. Th, the rock just broke to bits. Help me. Total chaos. Traditionally, for any member of an evil organization, silence is life. That's exactly why these chicks won't cut it. Even if a dragon is snoozing right in front of your eyes you should be thinking about silencing your breath and fleeing. The ones who panic this noisily are the villain 1, villain 2 set menus you so commonly see getting slaughtered by a charging hero. If you move you die. Oh. Looks like there are still ones that stand out even in this chaos. The first one who correctly identified the umbrella and the one who's just staring up the sky at the silver rain like someone watching a meteor shower. The former is one that knows about magic, while the latter is either lunatic or just simply that insanely skilled. Either way is fine. Those ones survive quite well. Especially the latter. Whether they're insane or insanely skilled. The fact that they can afford to act like that in this situation means that it's worth expecting things from them. Up till now there've been a few of that type. If nothing else they're fiendishly good at staying alive, you know? Umbrella, use the umbrella. The kid who first recognized the magic held up the umbrella I gave them and shouted. You crazy bitch how the hell is that an umbrella? A dumb one picks a fight in the middle of it. If you don't have the eyes to see you need to be able to trust people. No, if someone without the eyes to see blindly trusts people doesn't that make them a pushover? A crazy bitch is better than a retard. You, the one with pure water instead of brain fluid and that sparkling clean cranium of yours. Listen up. If this is rain, then humanity, no, life as we know is completely screwed during the rainy season. Like that other guy said, this is the Empire's child bombardment developed during the last Great War. And this is very much an umbrella, a protective staff with engraved with magic defense spells. That was it. When it rains, one opens up their umbrella. It's a special staff made specifically to block that silver rain of death. To be honest, it's simply because they didn't think of it, but that magic bombardment isn't something just anyone can use. Naturally once the Empire used it, all the horrified world powers immediately copied it, and same for the Murdia Kingdom that was completely totaled by the bombardment. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, everyone started using this strat, and on the contrary, the majority of the mage divisions were annihilated. What's there to hide? My favorite phrase is to be cut in the foot by a trusted axe. And responding to that faith. What my previous workplaces bosses and I came up with was this defensive strategy. Under the line of thinking that this magic bombardment strategy would almost certainly be used by the enemy sooner or later, we just simply thought our hardest for ways to give our enemies a giant middle finger, the result of which is that defensive magic staff. Plus one point to the kid who identified it first. For the record, at 10 points you get to graduate early but only the Empire's soldiers know how to use it. If we don't know how to use this, we're dead. Find how? This batch seems quite usable. It's not like there were ones who didn't recognize what that staff was in my previous cohort, but then there were idiots who just ran off with the staff after hearing those words, that moment was when I nearly recorded my first casualty in my entire time as an instructor. My previous boss and I were morons so taking into account the possibilities that they could be stolen on the battlefield, leaked by spies in our allies or troops, or like me, who stole the finished product and secretly sold it off to the enemy nation for a massive price, so with those considerations in mind we made it so that you couldn't block the bombardment with the staff alone. To begin with, the bombardment method is carried out by a two mage per team group, not using ice magic but directly freezing the moisture in the stratosphere and dropping it, so even if they block ice magic with magic barriers, it's a simple chunk of ice with nothing but mess and a very high velocity so the magic barrier goes flat, and as a bonus people also go flat. As a result, the method of activating that staff is different to activating all other conventional staves. And it's class 1 imperial classified information. 
But so the saying goes. Catch not fish for a man, but teach a man how to fish. So let's not catch fish for them and teach them how to go about catching fish instead. Let's narrow it in a bit. Visit dot, for the best no underscore vol underscore read underscoring experience narrowing in. Don't they say people perform the most spectacular feats right when they're on death's door? Seeing as how these kids still can't find a solution, I decided to kindly give them a solution instead. The solution being that if they couldn't find a solution then they would die. It's getting closer. Those of you at the edges, run to the center. Damn it. They're seriously gonna kill all of us. Sounds of the truly desperate. When humans are on the verge of death, their abilities skyrocket. Right now their brains are turning over very very quickly. So let's oil their brains a bit to help them turn over even quicker. Mix in a few big ones. Dot are you serious about not killing them? It's for show anyway. Fire them quite far off. At my words, the communication mage hesitated a bit before contacting the mages in the air, and shortly afterwards human-sized blocks of ice started to form pits as they fell. Thud. It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, please support our site by disabling your ad blocker. We depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. The grand finale right over there. As a block that seemed roughly 50 meters in diameter left a crater in the ground, an odd quietness fell on the trainees. Ah, fuck. That's straight up unblockable. Everyone was silent. As the kid that was the most proficient in magic, the one that had been coolly taking charge swore, the ones that had only barely calmed down started panicking again. Ah, looking good. This is? It was a comment to myself, but it seems to have been overheard. It's probably just me in thinking that the communications mage that was standing beside me took a step back while looking at me as if I was a devil or something. Right? Isn't it? A helpless crisis. A crisis that won't ever be resolved no matter how much fight with despair and frustration. Normally the beings called heroes are ones who actively overcome those. In any event, the beings called dragons are creatures you face while staking the survival of a small country on. But in old hero tales, dragons and demon kings are defeated as par for the course. This is not a place where we train heroes. Indeed. It is not. The complete opposite. However. When those beings called Braves or Heroes did appear, every time our organization has suffered tremendous losses. Even if we look like this we're still the Empire's largest evil organization. Even though we call off hundreds of brats that proclaim themselves a hero every year, the number of times we get seriously unlucky and get fucked over by a genuine hero is at least a two-digit number every year. And because of this we need heroes of the villains. Looking at the sector in turmoil, I smiled slightly. Ah. Grow. Grow big and strong my incentives. But back then I didn't realize. That the creature called a genuine hero would actually be born from this place. Number 3 Their Story the future hero's story Reina rules win. Even if I look like this I'm from the Reina Ducal family, one of the military pillars of the Karun Empire, the strongest empire in the continent. The strongest nation in the continent, and among those one of the greatest nobles which had imperial blood running through its veins. It sounds good when you hear about it. But because of that I'm 37th in line to the throne. Being in the line to the throne is great. It's a chance to be the greatest power, the emperor himself. The latest underscore underscore sodes are on underscore the dot website. But that, you need to be ranked high for it to be worth anything. 37th isn't even worth ranking. Rather, a perfect condition to get myself killed off quietly in a dish somewhere. Plus, the succession problem is already half, no, pretty much completely over. Two princes and a princess were in a three-way war, but one day the princess pushed all her backing onto one of the princes. Even now, it's said that if the princess had been a boy, this entire succession fight would never have happened. 
The other two princes had been half cooperatively wary of her, but since all her might went behind a single person, game over. Because of this, my brothers quickly gave up their plans for the throne and aimed for the duke's position instead. That's right. It's good. Succession rights. To a dukedom. The next best seat after an emperor. A man must have big dreams. But you know, I don't really give a crap. I just wanted to eat and have fun in the territory. But to keep that me in check, while spouting the biggest damn bullshit such as for the empire. Or for his imperial majesty. They gave me a secret mission as a duke's son. You call it a secret mission. Oi? To infiltrate the evil organization Howling, that's pretty much been around since the start of the empire. You all fucking mad? If you're that devoted to empire and emperor then you go. But due to my upbringing as a military family, actually no, a clan that existed purely to fight from birth, under my training as a reina child I recorded great results in my days in the lower barracks. I received the highest designation of one, and entered hell. Now my fresh hatchlings with eggshells still stuck on your feathers, welcome. I am the one in charge of Squad 1, Instructor Narwin. The man speaking to us from the pedestal was Instructor Narwin, a name which we heard of even the lower barracks and had been frequently brought up by the instructors themselves as well. Apparently, a man cursed by the gods. Because of that, he couldn't feel mana, nor could he use it. Apparently, a man with the mark of the devil. Because of that, the moment the devil's magic weapon in his hands sound out, even gods could only grovel under his feet. Apparently, the greatest career pathway course in the entire organization. Simply enough, as long as you could safely survive the training course, vice captain was a given, you could even become one of the ten people at the absolute top of the organization, the greatest course to success. Allegedly, the organization's greatest recycler. Trash would be separated out from humans by his hand. But my first impressions of him were simple. That's not a man. That's a devil. The instructor looked down at us with a cold expression. But I saw. The faint, but definite smile of a child whose parents just bought them a new toy. Other instructors start training from today, but just. For. Today. I'll be giving you kids the day off. If I talk any more my mouth will hurt and you'll only get pissed. Go to your assigned dorms and for today, enjoy your day off. From around me I could hear the sounds of idiots being happy. Ah, you morons. Did none of you get it? His meaning when he said he would dress us just for today. And training really did begin the moment today turned to tomorrow. It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, please support our site by disabling your ad blocker. We depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. Rise and shine, soldiers. Shit. They said that there would be an early start. They said it would be hard from the word go. So they said dressed up and grow fast. So the majority slept at around 2,200 hours. Even the ones later to bed slept at around 2,300 hours. But compared to them who were sleeping peacefully, filled with an anxious unease I didn't sleep, but prepared. Dawn at the earliest. But rising at midnight on the dot. And add to that I could even see the precursors to bombardment magic outside the window. What the hell? Wake up you nutcases. Four to a room. I kicked aside the ones who were still sleeping and jumped out the window. The latest underscore underscore sods are on underscore the dot website. I chose the first floor which was comparatively safer to escape from than a higher floor, the results were successful. And what I could see in the sky were countless magic formations. The sight really was impressive, but thinking how their targets were the rooms that I had been in just now sent shivers down my spine. Oh ho. That's one up and ready. And looking at the lodgings being half turned to dust as if he was amused by the sight, was Instructor Naruin as he turned to me. Oh gods. What crimes did I commit in my past life? 
to let alone be sent to an evil organization, but to be fated to be sent off to the devil of an instructor. Shortly after I was lost in my frustration and despair, I heard Instructor Narun's satisfied voice. 49 people successfully awake. What kind of training has half its cohort drop out when it hasn't even started? It seems that the primary training was quite tough for you. I am not an evil instructor. For your peers that needed sleep, I will give them plenty of time to get it. The 51 that couldn't wake up is probably headed for an eternal sleep. From what I heard, they're being sent back for primary training again. The ones whose skills are okay will probably go back for higher training, but the rest of them will probably made into high quality meat shields. Now then, the first training. The instructor tossed me a sheet of parchment as I was standing in front. I'm current time 034. All right, leisurely make your way over to the place marked on the map by 0300 hours. Listening to his words, I stared blankly at the place marked on the map. If my orientation skills I learned in primary training weren't different to here, the place marked on the map is at least a two-hour run at full sprint. The leisure time the instructor spoke of was barely 20 minutes. And also, it takes over two hours at a dead sprint. If people run at their highest effort then they need to rest, and walk slowly. Namely, an impossible condition. Oh. If you feel like you can't make it to the destination then feel free to give up. You can just come back and sleep together with the rest of your peers. He said as if to reassure us, but looking at Instructor Naruin's quaint smile, I, no, everyone standing here thought the exact same thing. If you fall behind you die. And I saw the limits of humanity. Total survival. It was a moment where we could see just how much fear could drive us onwards just what humans were capable of. But hell hadn't even begun yet. Ooh. I've heard 49 had survived the first attack, but to think 49 would be here as well. As an instructor, I am exceedingly happy. Really, I am so proud of you who were called the most promising cohort in recent history. I am so, 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 ooh, ooh happy, in fact, it feels like I might as well be crying tears of joy right now frivolous words. But his face was as cold and expressionless as ever. That made it even more frightening. Ah, it is said that the teachings of a teacher is akin to the heavens itself, but to think you'd make me cry. The gods above must be crying in joy with me as well. His eyes turned slightly to the skies as his words carried a hint of mania to them as well. Because he did, my own eyes nationally turned upwards as well. Clear sky. Sparkling stars. Weather which seemed like it would never, ever rain with this cloudless sky. Because of that, I shivered. I'd heard of it before. The Imperial soldiers, and in particular, the units under direct Imperial control used the word rain in their slang. Right, the tears of the heavens. It seems like the ground will get wet from the tears that turn into rain, and it would be a problem if my dear disciples caught a cold from the rain. So use your umbrella. Wait, this? The staff that someone tossed to us at the instructor's words. And another trainee let out a horrified shout. What the fuck? I was screaming internally yet it felt as if the words were caught in my throat. That was the special magic bombardment defense tool that was developed by the Imperial forces. Why was a class 2 defense tool which was strictly monitored by the Imperial family themselves doing here of all places? Oh. So there's already someone who can recognize the umbrella. This'll be simple, then. Visit dot, for the best no underscore vol underscore read underscoring experience grand magic defense staff. The special forces of the Empire call it an umbrella. In that case, the rain that we had been hearing of all this time could mean only one thing. Make it rain. It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, please support our site by disabling your ad blocker. We depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. And with those words, silver rain blanketed the sky. Chapter 4 
I didn't know then. 4. As the circle of bombardment gradually closed in, everyone started gathering in the middle. If this was a real war 1D let loose a big one bam. In the middle right there, but since this is kids training I'll keep it at about the right level where they can see the ground gouged out right in front of their eyes and leave it at that. Where else will you find such a kind instructor? Back in my day a trainee or two was a month was a given, and once on a real crappy day 10 of them went to the next world at the same time. That was pretty dangerous. We went to beat up some goblins under the name of practical training but an or came out. But really, the others were being ridiculous. I was 19 then, in my past life you could have gotten your resident ID card around about that age so at the very least they should have been able to take an orc or two without breaking a sweat. No matter whether you're specialized to fight humans or not, to think they'd be surprised and rooted by what are essentially just humanified pigs. Because of that I thought I was gonna die as I worked my ass off killing tin on my own. Compared to that, my course, where you won't die and are given challenging opportunities, I as an instructor am a generous instructor. But as you'd think, the kids aren't seeing that way. We're all gonna die. This devil of an instructor. I'll curse you if I die. To think they'd be so rude when I was out of sight. That one's number 960, that's number 72. Oh ho, it looks like 25 and 40 cursed me as well. Minus marks, minus marks. Initial impression failure. If they pass this let's take them around where the real devil lives. Well, even if they don't survive, when they eventually get sent back to the primary training centers, I can just put in some words and have them sent to the Canaria facility which has the highest mortality rate. But time kept on passing, and although some of the groups seemed like they were teetering between life and death, there was still no response. Around about now should be a good time for a couple of them to start passing. It would be troublesome if all of them failed. Since the final evaluation report consisted of the other instructors trained kids versus my trained kids, I just need at least one of them to survive. To put it bluntly, if other instructors send out 100 then I just need to send one man to match a 100. Having said that, if no one passes, then evaluation becomes impossible. Rip my incentive and my salary drops. My evaluation report could have a line like, no results achieved due to impossible overwork, written on it. In that case, after retiring from my instructor duties, I could be running around on the front lines or sent to some dangerous place where my head could be sent flying at any moment like my last workplace. The wages are only worth going for when you're young and can earn it, now I want to just turn a little less and work in the back. Should we reduce the output? The communication mage carefully asked me. Even if they look like this, the people that use can magic in the evil organization are all highly valuable resources. The mages that can operate in both the front and back lines are always in shortage no matter where in the world you go. I specifically asked my ex-disciple to be lent them for a week, but this too will show up on their assignment history later on, and if they achieve a record of 0% success rate in their first instructor outing then it'll be hard for them to find your line support work as well. But. The ones who can dodge, will. It's pointless. The sight of the rocks in the ground breaking, the earth forming craters right in front of them will all have made them imagine those things as their heads at least once already. The ones who are already scared won't cross with the umbrella just because it's raining a little lighter. If just one of them passes, the rest will follow suit. Every now and then you can see at traffic lights where if one person goes jaywalking, other people automatically follow them thinking the lights have changed. Once I saw the ridiculous sight where when one person went, the entire crowd crossed on a red light en masse. Well, that's a slightly different story to this, but when you're going to die either way, when one person passes then others thinking maybe me too will definitely come crawling out of the woodwork. The problem being that you need that one person. And that one person appeared. Visit. For a better underscore user experience, what the hell? A crazy bitch even to my eyes. Number 4 Their story, 
Mayarua's story. Mayarua. My name and the last thing I have left from the people called my parents. Since I was born, my country had been involved in a war. A really big war called the Great War. Even now I don't understand what it means. All I knew that people dying was part of daily life, and the only really big problem was that there wasn't enough to eat. Because of that, I was alone since I was six. When I was three with really faded memories, the person called my dad was already non-existent, and the day I turned six, mom went to the military camp for something to eat, but was swept up in an enemy ambush and didn't come back. Well, thinking on it now, there was the possibility that she could have run away, but that's what I want to believe. So mom vanished, and after that I moved around here and there to scavenge for food. Public order was in crisis. Because there was no one selling any goods, there was nothing you could steal, and in the nearby mountains where every green leaves were hard to find, the animals went extinct and you could hardly see so much as a blade of grass. Thanks to this I fought battles with cats for trash cans, hung around the army camps for stale food and lived life that way. Ah! Once when I slept by the walls of the army camp, there was a night assault by the enemy and even looking back on it now I still don't know how I survived that. It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, please support our site by disabling your ad blocker. We depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. And so wandering around here and there looking for things to eat, one day I met an angel. I will give you food. Will you come with me? Yes. Mom used to worry that I didn't show much emotion, but I was so excited I surprised myself. I followed the angel in black for maybe a few days. I reached heaven. Fwa. And for the first time in my life, I can eat the food called meat. Up till now I thought the brown fragments in the army gruel was meat and I stuffed it in my mouth fearing someone would steal it. Ah, looking at its beautiful succulent light, I had to take a moment to reflect on my ignorance. But reflections are reflections. Put in in my mouth first. It melted on my tongue. I can die happy now. I went to the place where a lot of people like wearing black clothes, and I got a set of the black clothes they wore. I got the name number 875, held a sword like they told me to, and learned how to swing a sword. Stab the dummy, slice the dummy, eat. Stab and slice the dummy again, eat again. I didn't like the long distance running they made us do because it made me hungry quicker, but since they fed us again it was alright. The instructor said I had no talent. They said my skills weren't improving, but since they fed us I didn't really care. Later on I was called number 1000. And when I heard that we had to leave this place I was sad thinking that we couldn't eat this place's food anymore, but the food at the place where we arrived was even tastier so it didn't matter. It's beautiful. Although I didn't really like it very much when they woke us up to sirens and bombardment like when I used to sleep by the army base, but right now didn't seem so bad. Clear night sky. The ice fragments that shine silver in the moonlight like shooting stars. Why didn't I notice this beautiful sight earlier? It was something I saw often when the base was invaded, but back then all I felt was the fear that I wouldn't be able to eat breakfast tomorrow. When I just looked at it peacefully, it was a really beautiful sight. We're all gonna die. This devil of an instructor. The latest underscore underscore sods are on underscore the dot website. I'll curse you if I die. The yells and curses from my surroundings are familiar. But the target is weird. To think they'd curse the instructor who gave us really tasty food and showed us this wonderful sight. Compared to the primary instructors who only made us yell and cut and stab and run and make us hungry, isn't he a good instructor? Ah. While I was staring at our instructor who was the target for all these unwarranted curses, a big mushroom came into my field of vision. I don't know its name but it's a tasty mushroom. I first tasted it when I was roaming around during the war, but when I did it was so delicious I nearly fainted. Oddly enough, all the other plants around it had been taken to be eaten, 
but that mushroom alone was left alone. Even when I was in the primary training barracks, when we had drills up in the mountains, I picked a few of them and roasted them secretly. It was around then where I made an effort for the first time and learned fire magic. Is it okay to take it? For some reason everyone else was huddling together, but they did that often in the primary barracks as well. They huddled around the strong or popular kids. I think they're doing that now as well. Since I did my business alone anyway, it wouldn't really matter if I went there and back by myself. It feels good to think I'll be able to eat that mushroom again for the first time in a while. My footsteps lighten. The silver rice fragments are falling beside me, but they couldn't stop by happy feet. I'm gonna die if I get hit by that. Instinct told me that it was dangerous. No, even if it wasn't instinct, I saw people being hit by that and turned into red paste really often. And so I'm used to it. I can go thinking I can just move that way. Nothing weird about that. And as I moved forward with my light footsteps, the ice fragments started falling behind me as well. There's a lot of them. My mood brightened a bit. No, it brightened a little lot so I got excited. If there's this much, I can eat my fill tonight and still have some left over for tomorrow. Today is a really happy day. Past life current life, combined 70 years. During that time, in the school, army, workplace combined I have seen many a lunatic, and since arriving at the organization I have encountered many more with multiple screws loose and I thought I'd seen them all. It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, please support our site by disabling your ad blocker. We depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. But now I realized how little I actually knew. Even if this wasn't designed to kill, it's still a magic bombardment. In the last great war, this was the technique that made all the kingdoms realize just who is in charge. Wait, to begin, wasn't this meant as a skill for massacre? as and get hit and you're screwed. And that kid is dodging it. So naturally, as if he's dancing. If dodging this was possible, all the country's strategists and elite families specialists wouldn't be clutching their heads to find a solution. But I can understand that much. But what he was doing, walking through that insane barrage with beautiful dance-like steps was picking mushrooms. Not caring one bit about the others looking stupidly at him. He was happily humming away as he pulled out his dagger and diligently harvested mushrooms into his pockets. Wait, aren't those shock shrooms? They do have an official name, but the mushrooms that are usually called shock shrooms, are poisonous mushrooms that when eaten, your body would tingle like you've been electrocuted, followed by paralysis with a high chance of death by cardiac arrest. It was a poisonous mushroom that even four-year-olds knew about, but he's collecting them while smiling? Is he trying to kill by slipping them into my food? Let's avoid food with mushrooms for the next few weeks. Rumors say that it tastes like you could see heaven, but since the possibility of getting a one-way ticket to heaven is higher, there are no morons that would actually eat it. Let's sneak a peek at his files. Visit. For a better underscore user experience, huh, number 1000. The one deemed least talented out of all the trainees. The majority of the detailed reports said no talent with the sword, lazy, vacant stares into space and so on. There aren't any good appraisals. Then let me add a line. Crazy BTCH. Handle with caution. Looking back, this appraisal is similar to the only girl of the crew from last year. Although she's a genius that worked her way to the position of deputy director of the intelligence corps. She was a crazy BTCH even looking at her objectively. The way she looked at me in particular resembled a viper waiting for prey to the extent that I had to live as if waiting to be ambushed at any moment. There actually were two cases where she invaded my bedroom. Can you bring that child over? Yes, sir. Note the current danger level as high. But since nothing's for sure. I thought that I should see him from up close before making a decision, but the exact moment I tell the communications magician beside me, 
Number 1000 turns to me instantly. Magic is awesome. Who needs cell phones? But I can't use it. Suppressing my tiny bit of despair and envy, I face the person in front of me. She's small. Her hair is short, but I think it's almost definitely a girl. Unlike the other trainees, she had two more daggers on her belt, one on either side, and her pockets that I used to call a biscuit pouch in my past life, were currently filled with freshly harvested shock shrooms. Did you call for me? A slightly dull voice. Plus one danger level. Why do you have those mushrooms? Ah. For a moment she was lost for words and looked at me warily. Plus one danger again. W, would you like to try them? With a shaking hand she took out a mushroom from her pocket and offered it to me. No. Do I look like I've lost it? I don't want to die yet. I'm all right. It, it's tasty. Contrary to her words, she put the mushroom back in her pocket with a relieved expression. She really did pick those to eat. Yep. Danger minus 20. But if the enemy, no, some reincarnated kind-hearted hero was her enemy, she would most likely turn coat if she was baited with food, so raise the danger level back again. I'll just leave the final danger evaluation as high. Eat these while you wait. Thank you very much. Wow, look at this kid. Just a few strips of jerky and her voice hits the high octaves. For a complete evaluation I immediately added another line to her notes. If she is not fit she has a high risk of sticking her knife in one's back, so at the very least feed her well no matter what. No way. As I diligently recorded my trainee's evaluations as an instructor, the communications magician beside me gasped in horror again. What was it? Did the kids get hit by the shrapnel from the barrage? I thought as I turned my head. What the hell? The latest underscore underscore sodes are on underscore the dot website. Another crazy bitch, no, this time a crazy bastard was added to the mix. Chapter 5 I didn't know then. 5 number 5 their story, the future hero's story silver rain in the night sky. But that was only due to the moonlight reflecting off it. In reality, they were chunks of ice being dropped from extreme heights. Destructive enough to annihilate anything on the ground, the devil's strategy that sent two armies to hell in the Great War. But right now, it was merely a backdrop for a beautiful dance. Weaving through the rain of destruction with light footsteps. And following behind those footsteps are indiscriminate destruction but the destruction never reached that small frame. One step, and another. The slightest deviation from the path meant being turned into unrecognizable meat paste. But the girl in front of us was walking that path while smiling. Everyone held their breath. The screams of despair were gone now. All that could be heard was the sound of the silver rain's destruction. How much more time passed since then? What the hell? Someone's curse seemed to mark the end of her passage through the silver rain of nightmares. And I, seeing the girl rummage on the ground after slipping through the violence oh so easily clenched my fist as I stared at her back. I knew perfectly well who she was. My exact counterpart. If I was number one, the foremost, then she was number one thousand or the very last. Up till now I didn't put much meaning into the number one title. No. I had actually thought it was natural. Although I had been sent here as a sacrifice of a hierarchy struggle, I had been trained in the style of one of the pillars of the empire, the Reina Dukedom. Moreover, I had learned from the best knights since the age of five. I trained myself following my father's words that I had to be the best, and I never thought I would lose to my peers. But now, I was so ashamed and embarrassed at myself. As someone that served the Empire I knew full well what that silver reign was. The six-year war where seven nations including the Empire had fought among each other leading their vassal and allied states. In the battle that began the year when was born, the Empire was victorious, and that tactic had been instrumental in securing victory. That was why I feared it. I had thought that the evil organization had simply mimicked the technique that only the Empire was able to use. 
But that was a fake. That was not the strategy the Empire used. Just an imitation. Not the Empire's high class skill, but a simple trick. Because of that, I didn't realize. Simply because of fear. Visit. For a better underscore user experience as soon as I realized that I picked up my sword and ran. Do have a death wish. A sharp scream. It probably belonged to the kid that had been keeping all the kids in line since earlier. The girl with sharp eyes that could recognize the umbrella. But unfortunately her sharp eyes meant that she couldn't recognize something either. One step, then another. Behind my footsteps, the sound of rattling earth. The slightest nick would completely shatter my body, but I couldn't stop my feet. How much more time passed? The longest time, but also at the same time the shortest of instances passed and somehow I managed to arrive where number 1000 and the instructor was waiting. Number 1000 was sitting on a small rock munching away at something. As I walked in front of number 1000 who had the same apathetic expression at both the sound of destruction behind my back and me in front of her, she looked up at me with those apathetic eyes. It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, please support our site by disabling your ad blocker. We depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. I'm not going to lose anymore. I said strongly to my opponent, no, to myself. Number 1 and number 1000 are irrelevant. The numbers from primary training should end at primary training. Humans are beings that only ever move forwards. So I will acknowledge it. The being in front of me is currently the first existence that had ever surpassed me, and was my rival. And on this day, I first developed my indomitable mind that instilled me to never give up, no matter what. Ta, with one exception. Number 6 Their story, Ra'el Nermia that, is that possible? I heard about it through the rumors, but is it really all up to its reputation? God damn it. Listening to the whispers around me I could only sigh. Just why was I suffering so much in this place? Even like this. I was part of the strongest nation on the continent, the Kuruan Empire. And within the Kuruan Empire, if you were to ask who are the strongest clan of magicians, 9 out of 10 would say the family of the Nermia earldom, and I was their second daughter. There was only one reason I came to this organization named Howling. In Howling, there was the possibility that the second half of the clan's swordsmanship manual and the family's seal was here in this place. One day, my grandfather, the previous head of the family, currently having given up his right to lead the family and living life as a member of the Magic Tower visited home for the first time in three years. And as father was working on documents, grandfather snatched away the seal he was using with a horrified look on his face. It was then the family realized that that seal was not a real, but an extremely well-crafted fake, and after that, Multiple investigations were conducted through which we found that the second half of the clan's swordsmanship manual had also been stolen. The Nermia family was a founding family of the Empire and a prestigious clan that produced many mages and sages. To Nermia, swordsmanship was simply a self-defense technique for mages, and so that itself wasn't much of a problem. No, at the time, the magical physical strengthening being developed by the royal family was even more effective, so you could say that swordsmanship was essentially all but pointless. To be honest, it didn't matter too much if it was gone. Visit. Dot, for the best no underscore vil underscore read underscoring experience but the seal was different. All the family's affairs were ultimately the responsibility of the family head and the object that represented the family head was none other than the seal. The seal was the family's diplomatic symbol and arguably the symbol of the family itself, and if it became known that the seal that had been used since time immemorial was possibly a fake, then this wouldn't end simply as just a stain on the family's honor. If this became known elsewhere, if they really pushed and desired so, all the contracts that used the seal up till now could be rendered null and void. Because of this, the family's children who knew the truth unofficially searched the land to look for the seal. 
my choice was to infiltrate as a member of the evil organization Howling, which had the most possibility of having it. There was opposition from the family saying that it was too dangerous, but if I stayed as I was, I would not have been strange for me to be married off to some high-ranking family son or worse, sent off to some old high-ranking noble's bedchambers. To raise my status within the family I chose to stake my life. Through my family's information network, I was sold off to a slave merchant that had frequent dealings with Howling, safely infiltrated the organization, and there were little problems in primary training. On the contrary, due to my basic training till then, I was able to achieve the high rank of number 17. But. I should have just married some high-ranking family's son. As I stared at the silver rain in front of me I cursed my past self that had rebelled against my lot. Just what was that? Let alone the Nermia family, the strongest magician family in the empire, no, all the wizards towers in the continent, the worst magic that everyone with even a fleeting interest in magic desperately researched, the extreme altitude bombardment magic. What was more, the umbrella that was tossed to us. The more I looked at it the more I was certain that it was authentic imperial craftsmanship that the family had been researching. It increased the efficiency at which one could cast barriers, added physical defense to said barrier, and also the ability to reduce the speed of an object so that it could be stopped by the barrier, a specialized defense staff developed specifically to counter the high-altitude bombardment. But just because it existed. It didn't mean that a bunch of kids who had only learned the absolute basics of magic that the Nermia family taught their children at the age of four, could use it properly at all. Thankfully at least it seemed like the instructor had no real intention to kill us, because compared to what we were taught at home, this bombardment was nothing short of sloppy. The most likely solution to this problem was for half of us to use our mana casting the barrier spell and the other half attacking the projectiles slowed by the barrier. Just when I was thinking to myself of how to approach this plan to the others. What's going on? One person steps forward into the barrage. No matter how sloppy the spell casting was, it could and would still kill you in a single hit. Whether to make us despair or to make us go operate, what was certain was that we most certainly weren't meant to walk straight in like that. What? But there was nothing stopping her light footsteps as she breezily walked out of the bombardment. It wasn't that the mages in the sky were deliberately avoiding her. It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, please support our site by disabling your ad blocker. We depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. The single weakness of this spell was that it was impossible to focus on a specific target. It was a simple spell that simply fired an object from the sky to fall to the ground at insanely fast speeds. If someone could control that fire then it would be more realistic to call them a dragon than a human. But was she dodging them on sight? That makes even less sense. No, every now and then she dodges by spinning and turning as if she was dancing but other than that she was moving in a straight line. Her line of sight was facing only forwards, never to the sky. This was the realm of foresight. If she was a step late at any moment she would be swept away by the barrage. But she didn't. The projectiles missed her by the absolute skin of her teeth, but none of them could so much as leave a scratch on the small girl. We could only stare blankly. As we stared, at some point, we noticed the girl's figure was standing outside the range of fire. Is that possible? It's possible. I saw it with my own eyes. That was an undeniable truth. Can I do it? The latest underscore up underscore sods are on underscore the dot website. Impossible. It wasn't that my own physical capabilities were bad, but that was long beyond the realm of simple physical ability. I was not an idiot pinning her hopes on some futile possibility. What was that? Could you just pass right through it? I can hear the voices of my peers around me. To be honest, even I wondered for a second there whether the bombardment was just illusion magic. I even wondered whether it was illusion magic that incited fear in us as well. But the conclusion was, this was not an illusion. 
It was then. Do you have a death wish? When everyone was stunned, someone ran forward. Familiar blonde hair. Number one, who had overwhelmingly claimed the number one spot during primary training time and time again. But even if he was, mimicking those movement was nothing short of. It's possible. It wasn't the same. If the former had the light steps of a girl out on a walk, the latter was like a lion charging to his objective. But the results were the same. In the face of the overwhelming charge, it came close several times but the bombardment couldn't touch him. And the current reality was that seeing number one and number one thousand who had reached the other side, people could hear their comrades' voices. One might be a miracle, but since two had made it across, it seemed like they were thinking they could make it as well. Ah, goddammit. I worked so hard on my team composition and plan. Leaving number 1000 aside, I had number 1 as a key role in my plans, but now I have to leave them both out. And even the idiots who were slowly moving to try it themselves. Although I wanted to let them just give death a shot, pointless loss of war potential was a loss to me as well. So let's teach them something. You insane imbeciles. Look closely. Making everyone else pay attention to me with a more than slightly annoyed voice, I lifted a relatively heavy rock with magic. Its size was slightly less than twice that of my head. This is your skulls. It was a bit heavy, but I put some force into it and threw it to where the bombardment was still falling. Thankfully, it flew far enough to reach its destination. Thump. A soft but weighty sound. Bang. As I pointed to what remained of its fragments after it was hit by the bombardment, I said. Now, anyone with a skull thicker than that rock. Get out there and take a shot. Having come to terms with reality, the kids closed their mouths. It's better than them being noisy. Now unless you're some sort of rock headmaster then can pour magic power into your head, listen up. Visit. For a better underscore user experience after everyone's attention turned to me, I lifted the staff in my hands. The idiots who don't want to go back to primary training needs to put up their umbrellas, and avoid the rain, no? It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, please support our site by disabling your ad blocker. We depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. Now then. Although not quite like those two idiots, but let's put my life on the line. Hi. This is Novel Admire. Thanks for the visit. Chapter 6. I didn't know then. 6. There we go. Aside from just over 10 people, the rest of them got together and began to move. The trainee who had noticed the umbrella's identity first coolly took the lead in creating a barrier magic with her at the center. The rest started to move forward at a quick pace as they defended against the bombardment. To be real honest I had considered calling this session off due to a certain pair of lunatics. No, even if it was only one that jumped and then you could safely assume that they were a lunatic, but the fact that the next one also succeeded created doubt and because of that you could have all sorts of moths jumping straight into the fire. Especially those who haven't experienced the Great War and heard only through rumors, and only the brief mentions in primary training, there will be kids who will be wondering if those rumors were true or exaggerated. If it's the kids who haven't experienced firsthand the numbers that were fucked over by this bombardment then you can literally see as a number. Hearing of hundreds of casualties is a hell of a lot different to seeing said hundreds of casualties in person. If it were the ones who were on the front lines they could understand the numbers but it would be foolish to expect the same understanding from these kids. That is the limits of these kids with no practical experience. They could understand just how big several hundreds are if they get surrounded by that amount of enemy forces on an assignment, but that sort of training is impossible here. It's an evil organization, but we don't recklessly kill young kids during training. As a primary trainee, even at the risk of reunification safety first is how we do things, and even once they become an advanced trainee, with the exception of practical experience, the court doctrine is to minimize casualties. 
No matter that it's been easier to get fresh bodies due to the fact that the Great War has caused the number of orphans have risen greatly in these past few years, in an evil organization where the vast majority of the work we do is illegal, we need to be aware of the risk that we could die at any time. Because of this, the places called evil organizations are always in a labor shortage. To solve this, we educate children from a young age and continue to bolster our numbers but the cost involved in this is no joke either. Before the Great War brought down the cost to a pittance, on average it cost 20 silver, 15 lately due to the drop in prices, to bring in a child, but when you multiply that by hundreds, thousands, then it's not a cost you can wave off. Plus the cost of feeding them, clothing them, training costs and so on, when you put them all together you wonder it might be just more cost effective to hire an adult but there are way too many spies from other organizations and countries, so for the most part we can only use young orphans or slaves. Because of this, I don't kill anyone. Perhaps even in my employee evaluation I might be appraised as a skilled instructor with no casualties, all the while fostering a high sense of fiscal responsibility. Since I bring results, it's not that my education is wrong, but the ones who couldn't handle it are too weak is the final evaluation. 37. It's a respectable result. The 12 remaining over there will be sent back to primary training with the 51 other kids sprawled in their beds, but that's none of my concern. The kids that failed are already out of my hands, but are in the hands of the primary training instructors instead. Time to go back now. Number 1000 who was on her third strip of jerky, and number one who was staring at her with a feverish gaze. Did he fall for her? Did he fall? Oh, a love story rare in this evil organization. The latest underscore underscore sodes are on underscore the dot website. Dot yeah, right. It's been a long time since I discarded those delusions you might find in a rough and one novel. I just have to hope and pray that number one doesn't backstop number 1000 during a mission out of a jealousy. No matter where you go, the majority of the beings called number one are the ones that can't stand the presence of someone above them. When I turn my head, while weak, I could see the resolve of the trainees that were now veterans of the Empire style magic bombardment. They all looked tired, but they still had resolve. Yep, that's how it should be. If they last resolve from just this then it would be very hard to educate them. I prefer comfortable and simple training methods. Of course, not comfortable and simple for the trainees, but comfortable and simple for myself. Congratulations for surviving the infamous Empire Bombardment. It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, please support our site by disabling your ad blocker. We depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. First raise their spirits a bit, then sign to the communications mage beside me. Dot are we really doing this? Yes. Maybe it was just my imagination but the mutterings oh, gods, why? Were probably just my imagination. The training we're going to do from now on is much simpler to dodge than the Empire style magic bombardment, no? Plus even if you're hit by it you're not going to die? Over the heads of the trainees that had their attentions trained on me, a faint magic circle shimmered. I could have all signs of it removed altogether, but that's for the last day. Since I am not that much of an evil instructor I will give them time to get used to it. Didn't they always say humans were animals of adaptability? They can simply adapt to this as well. Since you survived that highly infamous bombardment, a normal one should be easy. As a few of them stared horrified at the sky, this time, not silver, but a multicolored rain began to fall. Now, splendid trainees that survived the Empire's magic bombardment, this time it's the organization's favorite magic bombardment. Ah. We are controlling it so you won't die if you get hit, but you could still die if you keep getting hit, so be careful. Perhaps they didn't all hear me, they were very busy running away. Scanning and forgetting, no, in one ear and out the other? As an instructor this saddens me. Now, then. 
Shall we play for just a week? For the kids who might have my retirement on the line, I shall feed them experience like a high end restaurant chef. To start, the first menu is a premium set of all the magic bombardments they could face on the battlefield. Number 7 Their Story A Certain Organization's HR Managers Struggle. I read the reports from the organization's mages. Visit. For a better underscore user experience, a simple summary would be a devil's training that was impossible to survive. Evaluated as something that they wouldn't be able to survive at that age, no, not even in the present day. If it was any other department, and if the person responsible for that training was anyone other than Instructor Naruan, you could be very much justify swearing at them for weaklings. But even in an evil organization mages are special. Perhaps if they were magicians who hold up their rooms researching or stayed in the back lines spending all their mana for a single blast. But they're mages. In both the front and back lines as a given, infiltration, bombardment, assassination and all sorts of other missions, to think that a veteran special ops mage corps would provide this evaluation. And even the results only recorded three surviving out of a hundred. Starting from the Empire-style magic bombardment, for a continuous week of magic bombardments without any time for rest. No matter that they were given an Empire-style defense staff that was effective for defending against magic, the fact that three people actually survived as their bodies wore down over the week makes them the monsters. It wasn't that the trainees were weak, either. A whopping 30 survived for 5 days. Only 37 survived after the Empire-style bombing, but 30 survived after that. They independently dug holes, searched for cover, created bases and temporary shelters, and setting aside that these were all these kids' death struggles, it's proof that these kids have extremely good survival skills when you consider their age. Maybe rumors already spread, but the various special ops forces are already requesting even the dropouts. Heck, even he'd want them. Especially the five that dropped out on the final day wasn't due to magic bombing but the organization's specialty mid-range silent sniping. This was a skill we used a lot even during assignments, hard to block even if you knew it was coming, outright impossible to block if you didn't. The mages rated these five highly as humans, and the three that survived the mages didn't even think of as human, calling them monsters and such with ambiguous words that were hard to tell whether they were compliments or insults. Final evaluation, number 1, Lunatic. Very skilled with a sword but doesn't seem to be in his right state of mind. Seems to have the potential for magic but may be dangerous if taught. It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, please support our site by disabling your ad blocker. We depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. Giving dangerous glances to number 1000. Treat with caution. Number 17, Superior Magical Talent. Potential as both a magician and a sage. Has a habit of using her comrades as chess pieces. While her magic use is splendid, her use of people is even better. Confirmed reports of her sending her comrades to the expected snipe location. Shows extremely good talent as a villain. Number 1000. Lunatic. Survival King. Doesn't feel like she'll die no matter where you send her. There is the risk of betrayal if there is a skilled chef with the enemy, hence a fitting individual for missions in deserts or wastelands. As I summed up the mage's evaluations I could feel the beginnings of a headache coming on. A newbie might see this as the trollings of the mages but I already knew from the last batch of Instructor Narun's graduates two years ago that their final evaluations were very similar to the current crop. Especially, one person in particular was a special crazy bitch. He, are these my juniors? A, hey, uh. My heart stopped for a bit at the sudden voice behind me. Visit. For a better underscore user experience, why is this insane bitch here at this timing? Why are you so surprised? N, nothing, Vice Director. Harnel Saye. The youngest ever Vice Director of one of the cores of the organization, the Intelligence Agency. 
the person that that picky intelligence director had evaluated as someone who could be relied on to take over at any time, one of instructor Narun's former disciples. Once, when I was lacking in belief, I took this joke-like evaluation and stormed off to take the writer to task, and after I met with the examiner in question, was told to go check it out for myself and when I first went to instructor Narun, she was the first disciple I met, and the one who made me understand that very evaluation. The fears from then were engraved into my body to this day. He. I see. You're the man from HR. Is there a post where I can be together with Master? No? Really? Really? What with? Your. Life. On. The. Line? All that from a girl who'd probably lived not even half of his age. No matter that I was a support worker, one that dealt largely with paperwork, but back when I was young I'd run around on many a battlefield and the bloodthirst that she let off that I'd never experienced on any battlefield made me understand that evaluation. Don't be so scared. It's all thanks to Mr. Manager that I could rise to the seat of Vice Director. The Vice Director's beauty was stunning to the point that rumors had circulated suggesting that she got the post by selling her body. If this was a social gathering in the Empire's capital, there'd be no shortage of young noble boys that would have gathered to see that gentle smile but I know that smile. When I felt the greatest risk to my life, when I said that the closest place she could watch instructor Naruin from was the intelligence agency, that was the sort of smile she made. He this group, over half of them are women? She quietly exclaimed, but my arms were already ridden with goosebumps. The trainees who survived that training from hell. Those devilish talents, perhaps even actual devils, two of them will die. Ah, that's not it. Her bloodthirst vanished. Although my back was soaked in a cold sweat I did my best to not let it show with a composed face. If I wanted to live. The last five dropouts from master straining, I'm here to take them on the orders of the intelligence director. Please make the arrangements. I looked at the handwritten document from the intelligence director and nodded. Perhaps the winner of the power game this time was the intelligence agency. As I completed the simple paperwork, handed over the requisite files and watched her leave with a tense heart. My accursed ears picked up her small murmurings. Ah! My cute little juniors! Shall I pay them a visit? It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, please support our site by disabling your ad blocker. We depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. Gods. Visit. For a better underscore user experience, save the young devils from the claws of the devil. Chapter 7. I didn't know then. 7 Is it that tasty? As I said that watching the three kids scarf down a simple bread and soup, Number 1000 nodded as if she had no time to waste talking, number 17 blushed slightly and number 1 said brazenly. The food is not tasty, we are hungry. But unlike his attitude he quickly slapped away number 1000's hands away from his bread. It's not like I couldn't understand them. It's probably because it's been a while since they ate food fit for humans. After serving them a seven-day full course of every type of bombardment the organization had to offer, they were given a pouch of jerky and moved immediately to the mountains. Just as they got over altitude sickness, a raft in the middle of the ocean. And after hearing that they were sick and tired of water, they had magic sealing cuffs normally used for mage prisoners shacked onto their arms and thrown into the middle of the desert. Even then, Number 1000's survival ability was magnificent. An appetite that would even let her eat poison mushrooms for the taste. Maybe she has some poison immunity max that you'd only find in novels, but even if she eats poisonous mushrooms she shows no signs or symptoms of poisoning. I thought for a bit whether it was some type of mushroom I didn't know about, but then number 1 tried copying her and immediately rolled his eyes back frothing at his mouth. I even had to use an emergency antidote to barely save him. On the ocean, they caught a lot of fish, 
but her skills at cooking fish just right with basic magic were particularly praiseworthy. Even number 17 who's a magic prodigy occasionally burns hers, but number 1000's skill where she didn't burn her fish, not even once, was close to miraculous. Her final actions in particular, in the desert, had even me horrified. Without even a hint of hesitation, as soon as their drinking water ran out, she immediately bottled her own piss in her water canteen. The other two were horrified at number 1000's actions, and continued looking for an oasis, but there was no way I'd be that easy on them. Since I had brought them all to a place where I had already determined there was no oasis, it was fun watching them gradually drying out. Especially when number 17, who had held out till the end finally drank her own urine, just when the shame and humiliation started to fade away from her face, when she asked me how to gather water, as I showed her how to use leather to gather morning dew and cacti as a water source, her soulless stead face was absolutely priceless. And roughly two months of training passed by like that, and now we were back at our beloved barracks. After a simple meal, I decided to give them a rest day today. Although I was being quite benevolent, I don't think my disciples appreciate their teacher's kindness. Today. Then what's happening tomorrow? Dot again? Although their three horrified stares stung a bit, I need to endure. Yes, the heart of a teacher must be as high as the sky and deep as the sea. You may rest until the sun rises tomorrow morning. But their suspicious looks still haven't disappeared. In that case. Or should we start now? We're okay. Thanks for the break. I'll come out when it's dinner time. As I looked at them hurriedly turn around and head to the dorms, I sighed. Why do all my disciples have such little faith in their instructor? As I walked out pondering this, an exclamation just naturally sprang to my mouth. Look at those dorms. Perfectly restored. Even if it looks like that it's a specially made dormitory. It was made so that the higher you go, the less risk there is of someone dying from the building collapsing. Visit dot, for the best no underscore vol underscore read underscoring experience, since the building collapses at least two, three times a year, it was made easy to destroy, easy to fix, light and cheap. Perhaps the only downsides were that the roof blew off during a storm every now and then, and the building was sometimes cut in half when the kids were fighting. Well even so, if you make them come out and start surviving, then emergency weather activity training complete. No matter that this is a fantasy neighborhood where magic is life, the power of mother nature is fearsome even here. You need to overcome those environments in order to be tenacious enough to not die wherever you go. Oh, thinking about it, trapping them in a cave in like the dormitories seemed like a good training plan survival where there isn't the faintest speck of light. Should I try drawing up a plan? I thought as I entered my office. Oh, master, welcome. Slam. Something weird is inside. Why is she here? It's been ages since she graduated, why is she here? I opened the door again. Master. Why did you shut? I shut the door again. Yep. It's her. It's common sense to avoid the local mad dog when she's around. It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, please support our site by disabling your ad blocker. We depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. Plus, if it has rabies, it is highly recommended that you run away as fast as possible. If you get bitten while fighting it's only your loss. Master? Master? If the door doesn't lock from the outside, then Master is holding on to it, right? Is it alright when your ex-disciple is here and not letting her in? Wait, no, not letting her out? This is the problem. The heavily shaking doorknob. I'm holding on to it as hard as I can, but the moment I let go, I'm caught. Master? Are you listening? Can I think of this as confinement play? To think Master had these kind of preferences. She's bullshitting something, but I ignore it. 
The door handle is shaking more violently but it feels like it's going to break at any moment. What are you doing, instructor? But salvation came at the most perfect timing. What is the problem, number one? Ah, I came to replace the equipment damaged in the desert. All right then, hold on to the store for a minute. With a quiet voice, I call number one over and have him hold on to the door, and put some effort into it. Even though he looked confused, number one held on to the door with all his strength, and I turn around and gapped it as fast as I could. Let's run first. The others are problematic in their own right, but that one is particularly troublesome. She's oddly similar to my previous workplace's boss, and her crazy bitch personality is also similar and hence even more uncomfortable. It's dangerous to be barehanded. In that case I should prepare at least the minimal weapon for self-defense. The training's going to progress to the next stage soon enough anyway, so I might as well grab it early. Number 8 Their Story, The Future Hero's Troubles My heart that was fired up against number 1000 cooled quickly. After surviving the Empire-style magic bombardment, then the other assorted magic bombardment that followed shortly afterwards. At the very least it was easier to endure. If my body was normal that is. My entire body was screaming at me as I pushed it beyond its limits. Most of the others had their mana strained to the limit and were in similar conditions to me. Only number 1000 maintained her easygoing slowness like normal, but it didn't seem like she was going to lend a helping hand anytime soon. One person, then two people fell. Each person squeezed out their non-existent mana to dig a trench, head behind natural obstacles to get out of the line of fire, and when they barely intercepted an attack, someone shouted. There's something there. Sniper. We couldn't understand what they meant immediately. We'd already been holding out for five days under heavy fire, people dropping out wasn't out of the ordinary. It was a coincidence that we found out what that actually meant. Visit dot, for the best no underscore vol underscore read underscoring experience, when number 17 abandoned the temporary shelter that was all but obliterated by enemy fire and was about to head elsewhere. She sent the person that was with her in another direction. To an area that looked like a perfect place to get sniped. Kuyuk? I saw it. The figure of the person collapsing as if he'd been hit out of nowhere. But still. To think that it was a magic shot that left no traces of magic. To make matters worse, in the middle of heavy bombardment, and now with stealth magic. How the hell are you supposed to block that? They're blocking it well. But number 17 and number 1000 are blocking it with ease. Generally the shot came the moment the bombardments destroyed the obstacles people were hiding in, but surprisingly enough they blocked it well, and dodged it well. Did that mean there was a separate way to block it? I had to take two hits before I realized. The first shot in particular hit me in a very poor place. I could only barely defend against it by pouring all my magic into it. Ah, where exactly that place was is dangerous in many ways, so I'll leave out that explanation. The solution is quite simple. While on standby, spread a layer of mana at extremely thinly, and act like a sensor. While mana is being used at a very high rate, the moment I started to use that I found I could deal with it. Now, I can take whatever you throw at me. And the moment I thought that, training over. After telling us good job and tossing us a bag of jerky, he threw us into the mountains. It was there where I came to learn of altitude sickness for the first time. I didn't even know this illness existed. The empire doesn't have too many mountainous regions to begin with, and even the mountains it had weren't that high above sea level. Because of that I couldn't eat properly but number 1000 was happy that there was less mouths that ate. Because of that the moment I felt well enough to eat properly I stole one of the mushrooms number 1000 was roasting, and thanks to that I saw my deceased mother's face that I'd only ever seen in paintings. She sent me back saying it wasn't my time yet, if I'd followed her I'd have died then and there. And we hunted beasts in the mountains, roasted them, this wasn't so bad. Just as we thought that, training over.
It was annoying that training ended just as we were getting used to it, but now for some rest. There was a time where I thought such things. I relaxed and closed my eyes, and when I woke up we were on a raft in the middle of the ocean. All we had was a single fishing rod and a small bowl, one oar. End. Of course even though we could slake our thirst through water magic, there was no food. It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, please support our site by disabling your ad blocker. We depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. Just then, we realized just how good the environment was up in the mountains. We could hunt animals to eat, and if there were no animals we could eat grass and roots. But we couldn't even do that in the sea. The only thing we could very occasionally catch on a line without bait was seaweed. In the end we dove in to catch fish, but that wasn't easy, either. In addition, cooking the fish we caught. The sight of our hard-caught fish turning to charcoal right in front of our eyes was something we couldn't bear to watch without crying. As I looked at where Sky met Ocean far away in the distance, the inside of my head was also dyed in blue. As our instructor rode in an extravagant cruise ship that was completely unbefitting of an evil organization that symbolized stealth, he looked at us that were half insane and shamelessly asked. Where do you want to go next? Number 17 and I said we didn't want to see water anymore, we said anywhere as long as there was no water. And that was the worst choice we could have made. When does this end? Don't know. Don't talk to me, I'm thirsty. As I said that, sprawled out on a sand dune in a dying voice, number 17 replied with a very annoyed voice. Visit. For a better underscore user experience, the sea was heaven. I didn't know just how valuable water was. I glared balefully at the magic suppressing tool that was shackled to my right wrist like a chain, but it didn't seem like it would come off anytime soon. The saliva had already long dried from our throats. In this environment where we swallowed more sand than saliva, the sandstorms were like hell. Furthermore, despite how hot the days were, the nights were disgustingly cold. Even if we tried to dig a hole to make a shelter, because the ground was sand, a single gust undid all our efforts. In the end we were all getting sick of surviving with a campfire on a rock. I got food. Dot scorpions again. And the worst thing is that there is nothing to eat. The mountains were heaven in terms of food. The sea had a lot to eat as well once you got used to it. But the desert had nothing. Scorpions. Lizards. Except just once. Whether it was abandoned or lost, a camel came passing by number 1000 quickly caught it, aside from that time we had nothing remotely resembling meat. Back then, we took 10 big steps back as we looked at number 1000 who drank the camel's blood instead of water, but thinking on it now, we should have drank up when we had the chance, and I still regret that to this day. And so we struggled and training was finally over, and we were told to rest up for tomorrow, but where did it go wrong? Was it that I had checked my equipment for early thinking that training would resume tomorrow? And was the problem that there were faults a couple of items of gear? Or was it that I held onto the door that the instructor said the devil lived inside? Maybe, all of them were the problem. The door I was holding shut opened, or more accurately, destroyed, and from the inside a beautiful woman came out. That woman looked at me, smiled and said. So. Your last words? And I was hit with that opening. It was a mysterious beating. It was a refreshing beating. I was hit, it hurts and it doesn't hurt. Kuyuk. My gaze that had been looking forwards was now facing the ceiling. Seeing as how there are marks left, it isn't perfect. As I barely managed to turn my head, I saw a metal stick around a meter long. Was I hit by that? If I succeed then world conquest might not be impossible, but it's so hard. Kukkaat. It's odd. It hurts. It hurts so much. But it feels good. What is this? I raised the pleasure output, but at this rate it's just a masochist production tool. With light hand movements, the metal stick struck my body. 
what I felt was definitely pain, but when it came to my head it wasn't pain, but pleasure. Ha! Who what? Ah! Damn it! This is a failure. A disappointed tone. With those words the hand that was holding onto the metal stick stopped. Well, I'll leave the punishment for interrupting me meeting master at that. As I quivered and shook on the ground, the woman who violated me brought her face to my ear and whispered. Also, some advice from your upperclassmen. When you see something like this, run away immediately. She lifted her head and waved around the metal stick in front of my eyes, and unlike her voice up to now, she said with a serious voice. Once you see it, you can no longer die. It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, please support our site by disabling your ad blocker. We depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. Visit. For a better underscore user experience, the meaning of those words, I didn't know then. Chapter 8 What is this? Scary. 1. They say the three greatest necessities of man are food, clothing and shelter. And if I were to choose, I would choose food. If you do not have a house you can sleep rough, if you do not have clothes then you can roughly cover up, but if people do not have food, they die. From a certain hero's memoirs, I blankly stared at the training scene playing out in front of me. Die. This time for sure. You, suit defeat. Would the twilight of the gods, Ragnarok, have looked something like this? These, damn breaths. Ice buster, go on a. No, if you look at the fire giant that was said to have been at its forefront getting the crap beaten out of him, it's more than possible to think that way. If we look back a couple of months ago when this all started. From today onwards, we will begin a simple fitness training program. Although they were only three little squirts, even if you threw them out to work as a mercenary they'd be more than usable. Although they lack experience to be an E rank, they'd be a B, B at the very least. Because if they weren't then they wouldn't be standing here right now. And teaching those kinds of kids is very exhausting. The realm of genius, that realm is one where if you teach them something they'll get at least one thing out of it. Put another way, geniuses are the type that can learn 10, even 20 things. In the moment I play out all my cards against those types, I become a useless instructor, and an instructor with no fear or respect is easy prey from that moment onwards. Actually, the previous cohort started rebelling the moment they started getting used to the method keeping them in line. So I moved on to the next step, but I need to assume there's no way of knowing when that will stop being effective as well. Although in all honesty I don't think it ever will. Because of this, for the times when I need an effective method that uses none of my cards. The training is simple. Just run for 5 kilometers. A simple run. But. When the last conditions are added on it becomes different. It matters not what methods or means you use. You just have to not kill anyone. However. The person who arrives last, does not get to eat. Number 1000's blank eyes ignited. Oddly enough that child always put her life on the line when it came to food. To be real honest her appearance in the desert as she chewed a scorpion's tail which was known to have poison was a wee bit too much even for me. When she saw a desert fox that normal kids that age, no, even older people would normally think is cute, her bright smiling face that said she had found something to eat even appears in my dreams sometimes. To that kid, no, that bitch, not feeding her is the worst punishment. But it seems like number 1 and number 17 haven't realized the severity of the situation. Number 1 their story, the future hero's hunger, the sky is white. I'm hungry. Anything's fine I just want to eat something. The latest underscore up underscore sods are on underscore the dot website. It's tasty. It is. The instructor is a devil. Not being allowed to eat aside, but why do I have to stay at the dining table with them? Right beside me, number 1000 is happily wolfing down her food and number 17 is nibbling away with a satisfied look on her face 
and I realized what was holding me back. To be honest, as a potential successor to a duchy I had my pride. Just for food. I still had my pride to focus on something as petty as that. It was on the third day when I realized I needed to throw that pride to the dogs. But still as a man, I couldn't let girls starve for something as simple as food but on the third day, I was at my limits. The direct descendant of a duke. Looking at it differently, it meant that as a direct descendant of a duke, starvation was unthinkable. Sometimes in protest of my father's plans, his advisors went on a hunger strike, and now that I think about it they were very admirable people. How did they last a week, a month? It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, please support our site by disabling your ad blocker. We depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. Thinking about that when I did my best to run for lunch, a dagger flew in front of my face. Hey, wait. I hurriedly pulled out my sword and parried the dagger. I nearly died zoning out. If I die here then only my damn brothers will be happy about that. Maybe number 1000 felt she couldn't relax with the gap that opened up, but after throwing the dagger she started to run like her life depended on it. And closely behind her, number 17 ran with a slightly faster speed. Oi, at least give me one meal at least. I'm hungry. As I put strength into my legs while yelling that in my mind, all of a sudden I could see the sky. As I shakily stood, I looked at the ground to see that it was covered in ice. While the heat is passing by, it's not even autumn yet. But ice. These little. Grind. I grit my teeth and started running as fast as I could. Sure, circumstances being what they are, but still. Their comrade is this hungry. The instructor did say to not care about means nor methods, but she really tried to kill me. I swung my sword, used magic and ran like hell. I narrowly caught up, I was attacked, I fell behind, then I realized. I can't use my full strength because I'm hungry. They say a healthy body is a healthy mind. To put it literally, in a hungry body, a hungry mind sets in and you can't bring out your full strength. I should have noticed this. The opposition are in perfect condition. Compared to them I'm simply a golem running low on mana. When a golem runs out of mana, they become a simple rock statue. But it took me too long to notice. A day, two passed and oh my gods it's already been a week since I ate anything. The skies looked truly right and the rocks looked like fruit. Now, when I truly am down to my last resort. Dinner time, a light run before meal time. Visit dot for the best no underscore vol underscore read underscoring experience, but as I no longer had any strength left I collapsed on the starting line. Ah, even though I felt like I was going to die the instructor still didn't give me anything to eat. On the contrary, he's watching me closely to see if I'm sneaking anything to eat. To think I'd die of starvation like this. Not even my brothers that threw me into this mess would have predicted this. Dot hey, are you alright? Ah, she's here. It's number 17. I never really expected anything from number 1000 to begin with. Number 1000 is something that lacks a human conscience. I don't know what it is, but it's not human. I confirm that in the mountains, the sea, the desert. That bitch is someone who'd shave off and eat the ice from a glacier in the tundra. Compared to her, thankfully. Number 17 still had traces of humanity left. Dot dot ma. What was that? While she used her comrades to confirm the enemy snipers during training, it seemed that she still felt pity for someone that collapsed from hunger. She still had the conscience to ask the instructor if I was allowed a single bite as I stared at her, drooling. You you you. Uh. Hey. Speak slowly and clearly. At my faint and cracking voice, she sighed and brought her ear close to my mouth. Ah, sorry. But it's your fault for not noticing. The instructor didn't let me eat, it wasn't like he didn't let me drink. 
there's no way that my water-filled belly would ever lead to my voice cracking. Although my conscience stings a bit, my hunger takes priority. I whisper in the ear that came close to my mouth. Magic seal, magic chains. A? Eh? A? Eh? Her flustered eyes look back at me. Sorry. But I'm hungry. I'd covered the pre-drawn magic circle with my body. It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, please support our site by disabling your ad blocker. We depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. There's only one way to hold down the best magician out of all of us with magic. An ambush with a pre-prepared spell. If I were to use magic at the same speed as number 17 I would never beat her. Of course, even if I tie her up first, she'll break it with time. So. Kachank. Kachank. Oi, wait. What the hell? Release me. I shack the cuffs and bindings I'd prepared earlier on her while in slim wrists and ankles. In the gear storage that the instructor had said was freely available to us for training use, there were also handcuffs. When he saw me taking these, the instructor looked at me passing by with a quaint smile, but that didn't matter right now. Sorry. You little shit. I could hear all sorts of curses from behind me, but I installed additional sealing magic circles and soundproofing magic circles beside her. Ah, just in case. I also put the remaining handcuffs on her as well. To be honest, it would have been great if we had the magic sealing shackles we'd had on in the desert, but unfortunately they weren't in the storage. Visit. For a better underscore user experience, well, these will tie up number 17 for long enough. And that day, I could eat food in second place. It was truly delicious. Training went even better than my predictions. I never actually thought things would proceed this far. The ones that had the best relationship between their peers, the second cohort that I was in charge of chose the order in advance and logically sorted out their eating schedules. Even the previous cohort that were at each other's throats ended things simply as testing each other's skills, not with their lives on the line. Move. But this cohort is insane. Over food at that. Die. The earth shook. Knives flew. As if the idea that it was a shame for a swordsman to let their swords leave their hands was bullshit, he simply tossed his favorite sword at attacks he felt he couldn't block. The incoming magic collided with the sword and exploded. He pushed through the space where the poor sword met its end and charged forward. All of you. Get lost. And a blue light flashed in front of number one's face. Sword key at that age. Even named swordsmanship clan's successors don't have many cases of sword key users at that age. Meaning that those geniuses are rare even in families where kids get a toy wooden sword at the age of three and hold their first actual sword at seven. And a trainee at an evil organization, and one that hasn't been learning the sword for a few years using sword key is nothing short of insanity. And the process was even crazier. Once, just once. Number 1000 came last. Maybe she let her guard down, or she took a coordinated attack by the other two, I don't know. Because it's not like I keep an eye on them running all the time. However in a corner of my mind I thought that it was natural that number 1000 would be in the top ranks, and it was like that every day, but that day there was an unexpected incident. And the scene where she cried airs the size of chicken gizzard while watching number one and number 17 eat is still in my head to this day. And after mealtime ended, as she swung her sword as if she was furious, sword key formed at the end of her blade. What kind of bullshit is this? If you made her fast for a month then she'd become a sword master. Or stick a sword in my stomach before that. The training sessions that became even more fired up the brats that improved on their own. And so I decided to add some more fuel to the fire. If you come in first place I will give you a special meal. At those words, the kids that thought it was okay if they weren't last, started to fight even harder to claim top spot. In all honesty I wasn't going to go this far either, just experiment with it for 2-3 months, 
but since their skills naturally improve just with a single person not getting to eat, I can't give it up. After that, number 1000's overwhelming victories continued. The differences in sword key grew. Cutting magic, cutting swords. To fight against that you need similar sword key or even stronger magic. And so number one awakened sword key as well. All to block and dodge the sword key aimed at his face. Like an animal adapting to survive to its natural environment, number one awaked his sword key in the face of number one thousands attacks all by himself. And as the second round began to play out, number seventeen came to me. It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, please support our site by disabling your ad blocker. We depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. Visit. For a better underscore user experience, I want to get stronger. Stronger than anyone else. With a very powerful rage and determination. Chapter 9 What is this? Scary. 2. Rage. That was the only thing that could explain the emotion burning within those eyes. It will be difficult. In all seriousness, as someone who uses magic as her primary focus this training is disadvantageous for her. Magic requires a lot of preparation. If you want to strengthen magic you need a catalyst or magic formulation, ranged rather than close combat is easier, and if a swordsman comes into close quarters then all you can do is run like your life depends on it. There's a reason why magic users are split between magicians and mages even though both use magic. The specialties between magicians who focus on a single massive shot compared to mages who utilize fine mana management for prolonged fights is completely different. Number 17's base is as a magician. Perhaps the primary training centers are skilled at teaching magic lately, but she's the best magician I've seen from them to date. But magicians always perform at their peak when there is someone protecting them. In the current 1 to 1 colon 1 format, especially when the both the other opponents focus on using a sword, she can't help but fall behind. In that case there are two methods. Using assorted tools and a focus on close quarter combat to switch to a mage type, or contracting with a summon spirit and supplementing your fighting potential. And the quickest method is nationally the latter. To begin with, mages need to suffer for at least a year on the battlefield before they can be accepted as mages. And even then as newbies or brets. If they can't accept this process then rather than a mage, they're treated as a flying maggot or mead shield. In reality, a mage is a crappy job where no more than 3 out of 10 survive after being deployed to the battlefield, with no guarantee that you'd survive after that either. When the enemy's number one priority targets conveniently come down to the front lines it's even easier to hit them, and the world's advanced in leaps and bounds lately, special arrows that deer through magic barriers like paper have been developed, so this is an era where if you have the funds, you can snipe off skilled magicians and mages from a long way away. Because of this, rather than bothering to teach them those things for ages, it's much better to bring out a big, Midi summoned to take a hit and train as a magician raining down overwhelming firepower from afar. The disadvantage is that the mana consumption is massive, but normally a rear guard magician is never thirsty. Because they have a mana potion at their mouths pretty much 24-7. The downside being that they have to go to the toilet frequently. In the past where I was cursed enough to have to participate in the Great War when developed special diapers and made the magicians piss in their pants. My, did I get a lot of resentment then. But it's not like I wanted to do that either. It was hard enough that if the magic artillery had to be stopped because one asshole had to go the bathroom the enemy's main force would swamp us immediately. Those magicians didn't understand my efforts in developing a diaper that wouldn't stink even when they pissed themselves. And so let's get a good slay. I mean summon. There was something I wanted to experiment as well. First, draw a summon circle on pre-prepared ground. This. Isn't this a summoning circle for devils? Oh ho. The primary training centers, it seems they're teaching them really well lately. 
to think she'd understand what type of magic formation just by looking at it. As the representative of the tertiary training instructors, I should send them a word of praise later. Words don't cost money. So you know. Aren't contracts with devils bent under the empire's laws? I sighed seeing number 17's slightly surprised face. Visit. For a better underscore user experience, what is this moron saying? Long before we committed the crime of making a contract with devils, we're already members of an evil organization and hence perfect criminals. Ah. As number 17 made a stunned expression I continued drawing the formation. Ah, now that I think of it, they don't teach them this in primary training. As a splendid instructor I might as well tell her. And if you look closely at the Empire's laws, making a contract with a devil isn't strictly outlawed either. Eh? What on earth is that? Even though I look like this at one point, I'd spent a number of years in the Imperial Court that stank of blood over the right of succession. I diligently learned the laws because I didn't know when my head would be sent flying if I didn't. Simply in terms of the Empire and international laws. I can go toe to toe with one of the Empire's judges. Contracting with a devil is not a crime. Making a contract with your soul as the price is. Isn't that the same thing? No, you moron. Normally, all summons are restricted by their class. It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, please support our site by disabling your ad blocker. We depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. Spirits and beasts are a given, you can even summon gods from other worlds here. You even get cases where you get familiar names like Zeus, Odin and so on. In addition, the major league of the 72 demons in the Lesser Key of Solomon, the Clyphoth, the mythologies of Greece, Northern Europe, the Orient and their demon kings and so on can all be summoned. But among those, the devil's destructive powers are unmatched. The reason being is the price of their summon, a soul. Only devils make a contract with souls as the price. They're scammers among scammers. Like loan sharks lending 1 million one and tearing back 10. Souls are the realm of things not even gods can interfere with that only the creator gods who created the world and tasked the gods with looking after it can touch. A scam contract that tears that realm out under its name. Because of this, those that make contracts with devils can use their souls as a price to obtain great strength. The running costs are too high. If you were given a catalog you would never ever choose them, but unfortunately there are few specialist texts on summoning and the ones that are on the market are so pathetic compared to what I know there's no point even looking at them. And that's why contracts are prohibited. Because devils are beings that infringe on the inviolable territory called the soul. Then isn't it right that we shouldn't do it? Number 17 said, tilting her head after a short moment to think. Her appearance that actually matches her age is quite cute. Think differently. If devils are assholes that scam people using souls as the price. Thack. The magic formation drawn with chalk was complete. This should work. If it doesn't then number 17 becomes a criminal, but since she's a member of an evil organization she's already a budding criminal. Well, the important thing is. While a soul might get forked over to a devil, it's not my soul so that's not a problem. Even if I did try myself, I have absolutely no mana so it's impossible for me to summon. Even when I tried to contract a summon that someone else summoned I was refused. Really, to hear from a devil that my soul was rotten, just what kind of bullshit is that? And so, this will be my sacrifice for this experiment. The experiment name is. We can scam devils too. Will it be on the level of a certain demon's contract? 1. Number 2 Their Story, The Archdevil's Master Story We Can Scam Devils too. Visit. For a better underscore user experience, what kind of revolutionary bullshit is this? I said I wanted to get stronger, but I never wanted to be a criminal. But, after listening to the instructor's words, I'm already a feature criminal. 
if I get caught by the Empire's soldiers, killing myself before I brought shame to my family was the right way to go. Real seal or no? Should I just give up and get married? The more that I thought, the more shame I felt thinking whether this was what I came to an evil organization for. The reason I was getting stronger was over food? I, the daughter of the Nermia earldom, one of the great families even among the many in the empire? No, this. This is all that damn number one's fault. To think he'd use someone coming to help him. Worse, he'd put six cuffs on my wrists, seven on my ankles. Clusters of cuffs on these frail wrists. Even in the empire which gave zero rights to criminals they didn't even treat the death row inmates like this, and he did this to me, a weak little girl. To think he'd use all sorts of magic formulations and cuffs on someone who was trying to help, I felt to the bone why the phrase biting the hand that fed you existed. And after that, as if his desire he'd been suppressing burst after that one meal, number one started running like a man possessed, and after that the number of meals I had were getting less and less. To be honest, after the first few months of hell that the instructor put us through, the training itself wasn't that difficult. On the contrary, they were amazingly normal and effective, and I was actually somewhat satisfied by the theories that I'd never heard of even in my family. But that all changed after number 1000 failed to eat once, just once. To the point that if I could go back to the past, I would run at myself over that time and stop me. Now that I think about it, number 1000 never missed a meal? All of a sudden the unfairness of the situation came to words, and number 1 agreed, and as a result of us cooperating we stopped number 1000 from claiming first place. Her attacks that seemed like they were really going to kill us had our nerves on end, and I started to regret why did I put myself through this misery, but being faced with number 1000's sorrowful expression at mealtime filled me with a quaint satisfaction. It went without saying I was on edge at that meal. I ate only using my fork. Because number 1000 could have charged in at any moment, the knife in my left hand had to be on standby at any moment. But number 1000 most cried and watched, she didn't lunch for the food. After the food was gone, when I finally relaxed, the instructor said this to me. Number 1000 knows the law of the strong feeding on the weak more than anyone else. That's why she feels resentful. I replied instinctively at those words. That she was attacked by two people? It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, please support our site by disabling your ad blocker. We depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. No, that she couldn't hold out against just. 2. People. And her weakness that prevented her from meeting what should rightfully have been hers. Words that were difficult to understand. But unlike normal, the instructor smiled, a smile that sent a shiver down my spine and disappeared after saying one more thing. You kids, may have awakened something that should have best been left sleeping. It was when I could no longer see the instructor's back, that I realized that my back was soaked in a cold sweat. The next day, number 1000 used sword key. The week afterwards, number 1000 started awakening to magic by herself. And after some more time passed, we could no longer beat number 1000 even with our combined assault, so nationally the alliance dissolved. And when I realized it, I was the weakest among the three. When it was easier, I could have made a contract with number 1 and just took turns eating and solved it peacefully like that, but even if I said that now it was far too late. After a day, then two passed, the sense of danger was at my throat. And my hatred for number 1 rose up again. Although this is partially my fault, I don't want to admit it. I offer my name and Rona, and call your name. I'm reading the lines like I've been told to, but this feels weird. The lethargy that comes with all my body's mana draining from me. Visit. For a better underscore user experience, not all devils are equal. Low ranking devils can be contracted even without your soul if you're skilled enough, but high ranking beings if handled wrongly can lead to a small kingdom's downfall. 
the dangers of those have been documented far and wide. Some enchants might be found in hidden old ruins of an era long gone, and as cases of accidental summons came to light, parts of the summon chant were made public, and the Summoners Association made an announcement that any summoning chants with that part present should not be carried out. And as a house of magicians, the Nermia family made frequent use of summons and had all sorts of knowledge on chants, and knowledge on devils as well, but this was the first time I'd encountered a chant like this. Thy, gatekeeper of Muspelheim, the great giant that set a world ablaze. Ah, my head is screaming at me to shut my mouth, but this mouth of mine doesn't show any signs of shutting. What, set a world ablaze? Forget high-ranking demons. If it's like this it wouldn't be weird to expect an archdevil, or even a demon king. The one who completes the twilight of the gods, I call your name. Ah, twilight of the gods. It even sounds dangerous. The great giant of fire searcher, descend to this realm, appear before my eyes. Ah, it's too late. I have crossed the river of no return. With the fatigue of magic draining from my body, I felt my heart hammering. Ah. This. Yep. Fear. This is because of fear. Are you that pleased? W.H., what do you mean? As I looked at the sparkling magic formation, I snapped at the instructor's voice behind me. Ah, I can't afford to be hated. Then. What's that smile? Smile? I'm smiling? What kind of monstrous accusation is that? Here. My heart is hammering with fear, there's no way I'd be smiling? Ha ha. Really? Damn it. I stared wordlessly at the instructor who'd brought a hand mirror out from somewhere and was reflecting my face. Damn it. Talk about prepared. All right. I admit it. In the mirror there was a crazy bitch that was giggling like a maniac. With my face. All right. My heart is beating a bit, no wildly fast. The strongest nation in the continent, the Karun Empire. And one of the great magician families that you'd rate on one hand within that empire was the Nermia family. Even I, who'd read almost all the books in the family, had never heard about this giant called Surger. But, I can not tell just by the chant. This is an archdevil that would only be named in myths. As a magician family, as a magician. There is no way I could pass on learning something that no one else knows. Judging by the instructor's words, I could make a contract even without using my soul, but there was no guarantee of success. A dangerous gamble, with my soul on the line. If you weren't excited here you weren't a magician, no? How much time passed? When the brightness of the magic formation reached its peak, a giant with a body red as fire appeared emanating an intense heat. Bang. Are you the ones who brought forth Surtur, the master of Muspelheim? The giant of fire appeared by slamming his hand onto the ground. The moment my body filled with delight in the spirit. The price of your contract is not but. A. Eh? The giant of fire who had been indomitably speaking made a very shocked expression before looking at the ground he'd slammed down on. Yep, not. Zero. Nothing. It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, please support our site by disabling your ad blocker. We depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. Visit dot, for the best no underscore vol underscore read underscoring experience, the instructor's fiendish voice echoed in my ears. Chapter 10 What is this? Scary. 3. Number 3 Their Story, A Certain Push Over Slaves Story, The Final Giant Who Once Burned Down an Age of Mythology. The greatest archdevil who ruled over fire. He was of another level above ordinary devils, the master of the giants, the lord of Misphelium that even the gods feared. That existence was I, archdevil searcher. And such a personage. Was. Bored. It's boring. Too boring. Just how long do I have to sit on this throne for? My waist is starting to hurt from how long I've been sitting here for. 
I'm actually training daily to create a strong first impression as an archdevil, but so what? No one ever calls for me. Well, I do understand. History is made when I move. From what I heard from the kids under me, a couple of years ago something called the Great War happened and the humans fought furiously tooth and nail and all, the moment I stepped forward I could turn even the Great War into a children's scrap. Because the one who once set an entire world ablaze, one of the highest among top class devils, is me. And because of that, I always ponder. As I am such an existence, could a human summon me? I've been spreading and scattering the method to summon me since what the humans called the Dark Ages, but humans, especially the ones who believe in gods, diligently collect them up and burn them. They say to protect the world from devils that would threaten the world, you should stop the summoning from happening to begin with or something like that? Thanks to that, it's about as hard as plucking the stars from the sky for devils like me to go out to the human world. Of the ones humans call archdevils, how many of them are currently contracted out again? Only two come to the top of my head. Even if I include any potential contracts by devils that I don't know of, I could probably count them on one hand. What kind of contract rate is this pathetic? Isn't this way unreasonable? At this rate being a high class devil is probably better. Because while we make a single contract, they make 50. Because they're somewhat strong and yet also somewhat weak, they're easily contracted. What kind of injustice is this situation? At least before Ragnarok I did my job as the gatekeeper of Muspelheim, but I was free after that. And because of that it's been 5,000 years since I last went down to the human world. Sure, you say 5,000 years, but since I don't know when I have to make a contract, I spend most of the day sitting on this throne. You try sitting on a chair for the majority of 5,000 years, it's boring as hell. If it's now I could give them a great bargain with a contact for only half their soul. A grand service that not even high devils won't do. And this Lord Searcher is offering this bargain sale. Why are there no customers to make a contract? I'm bored enough that if another 1,000 years go by like this, I could even give them a free contract. A. Eh? Was my fervent wish answered? An unfamiliar ripple formed in the air around the throne. It's, it's a summon. The latest underscore underscore sodes are on underscore the dot website. To think that there was still a human left that knew how to summon me. I check my body. Very good. The best condition. I could fight the gods right here right now. Clear my voice. Ahem. Good deep and powerful. I need to leave a strong first impression to make it easier to get a contract. Even if you say that it's a contract with a human, you can't take it lightly. The first contract in a whopping 5,000 years. If the human decides to not contract thinking I'm useless then it's only my loss. So I need to make the best preparations. I just need to get the contract first. Once I make the contract, I can take everything from the contractor and burn the land in the best state. Now, I'm off to the contractor, 3 seconds remaining. It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, please support our site by disabling your ad blocker. We depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. Cover my body in white flames to leave an even stronger impression on my contractor. Two seconds left. I must not show on the outside that I was looking forward to this contract. One second. Finally, taking my signature pose, I lift my hand high. Zero. Bang. Are you the ones who brought forth Surtur, the master of Muspelheim? Appearing in a bright light and slamming the earth. The stone fragments that scattered in the surroundings were very satisfactory. It was a spectacular summon. The summoner was probably surprised as well. Because they wouldn't know they'd summon an amazing archdevil like me. Now, what kind of summoner is the one that called me? Although I don't show it on the outside, I gather my excitement and look at my summoner. Youthful. No, young. But to my eyes, 
and archdevils, I saw overwhelming potential. This is, what they call a genius. Human yet far removed from humanity. Undeniably, a figure that would leave her name in the history books. Very good. Let's engrave my name with hers. So that no one will fail to know her name and mine, in the name of fear and despair, I will engrave it in history. But the contract takes priority. The price of your contract is not but. A. A. What? My hand is hot. As the giant who ruled over fire, it is very odd for me to feel heat. My eyes naturally turn downwards. Looking at the ground, the floor is shining. While it goes without saying that a summoning circle should shine, the color is weird. I infused mana into my vision and looked down, and under the summoning circle, something was shining. Visit. For a better underscore user experience, yep, not. Zero. Nothing. As I stared at the ground in confusion, a man's voice came into my ear. Not. Zero? What kind of bullshit is this? And words became visible in my field of vision. Contract between Devil Sertrand, Rhea El Nermia, Dash Gisrol Dash, the master of the Burning Land Mustfeliaim, Archdevil Searcher recognizes contractor, Rhea El Nermia, as his master. Pledging obedience to her and all of her commands, and not acting independently without word from the contractor, he swears to the world to lend his unlimited strength and talents with no compensation. Whatsoever. Fuck. What the hell is this? It's a success. What are you, my fearsome brain? Was I actually a genius? It's a pity that I'm wasting it in service to an evil organization, but too late for that. Ah. Shit. God damn it all. If only my parents didn't pass away in the fight between the hero and villains. No, even if that stupid lord didn't make the first gamble in his life and was fucked over by the empire. If then I could have become a grand figure like in Ice Kai novel's protagonist. Whoa now, calm down. That's all just a daydream, isn't it? When I was alive the trending genre was where the protag basically suffered a lot. Let's be satisfied with my big fat paycheck. As I went through happy memories at full speed, I saw a very flustered Mr. Lord Archdevil. W.H., what is this? He probably saw the G's roll. It cost quite a penny, but it's nothing less but a contract with the world as witness. A contract not even gods can do anything about, a contract with the creator's authorities inscribed into it. There are only three places in the entire continent where these are made on a small scale only, where let alone other races, even the oil and water races that are humans and demons keep the peace, I bought a few of these while I was there, now is the time to use them. Of course, the expenses will be passed on to accounting later. This, this is a scam. Yep. It's a scam. I took the basis of this scam from a particular devil. It looks like you're using an ad blocker. If you enjoy our content, please support our site by disabling your ad blocker. We depend on ad revenue to keep creating quality content for you to enjoy for free. Ads are necessary to keep the platform free for all. There was a mid-tier demon that the organization contracted with frequently, whenever he was summoned, he always appeared in green smoke with his arms crossed haughtily. And when I had the chance, I asked the devil. Why is there always green smoke whenever you're summoned? And the devil answered. Because this is how I respond to summons. Hearing him out a bit more, apparently other demons were appeared in their own distinctive ways when they were summoned. To get the precise details, I cooperated with one of my disciples and summoned a low rank demon, when I politely asked him, he answered us. In the case of the giant wolf in Northern Europe mythology, Fenrir, he howled for around a minute into the skies, the Major League vampire Count Dracula appears by hundreds of bats combining into one. There were three that seemed like they'd fall for the bait, and one of them was this Muspeliaim's master searcher. He actually appears as he slams his hand into the ground. Could you say his destructive summon is really appropriate for someone that destroyed a world? From what I heard, 
Once he appeared in an old cave system like that and buried his summoner in a cave in. Anyways, the contracts between humans and devils, no, the majority of the contracts between humans and devils are verbal contracts. While in my past life they were theoretically binding but seemed of absolutely no benefit to me, here you can even give away souls with oil contracts. The latest underscore up underscore sodes are on underscore the dot website. In that case, what if you make a written contract? With the person's thumbprint? I prepared a stone plate, and placed the G's roll onto it. With number 17's thumbprint firmly stamped. Stage 1 preparations complete. And now, place that stone plate underneath the prepared floor, and on top, a specifically prepared ink plate, and on the very top, a normal looking floor. And this stupid giant appeared with I am Searcher and slammed. His hand down, the actually very thin ground broke under the impact, and firmly pressed his fingerprint down on the deepest layer. This, this kind of contract. Searcher started smashing the stone plate his thumbprint was on, but since the contract was already made according to the G's roll, since the contents are already engraved onto number 17 and Searcher's souls, it doesn't matter what he does to that stone plate. Heck I wasn't even sure if such a ridiculous method would work. But would you believe it everyone it actually worked? Obedience? I can't even act independently? And with no compensation? Go on ah The giant that set a world ablaze roared. Sircha was seriously strong. He was strong enough to chew up Northern Europe's last hope fray and burn down the world. But so what? Now he's a slave devil under a slave contract. Number 17, tell him to shut up. Please shut up. I looked at Searcher silently opening and shutting his mouth with oddly aggrieved eyes and nodded to number 17. It looks like it's gone well. Well of course, due to the scam contract the amount of power he can exert onto this world is decreased. No, even before that. If it was that slave contract an archdevil this proud wouldn't even want to show off his full strength. But it's an archdevil. He's fucked over an entire mythology? Even if the key forces Odin and Thor were screwed over by monsters during the Northern European mythologies war Ragnarok he's still a devil that set the world on fire? If someone like that roams around then what kind of weak civilian, no, small-time criminal like me, without any mana? supposed to survive. If the world burns, then there's nowhere for me to spend the money I spent half my life in an evil organization to earn? And therefore a seal. On the contrary, having been weakened is better. Naturally. Number 17 could more than backstab me sometime in the future. In this place, even if she is my disciple, on the contrary because she's my disciple that she could knife me in the stomach. And that place is called an evil organization. And thus, I've become a hero that saved both my peace, and while I'm at it the world's peace. Dot mother, father, I've become a hero that saved the world. Number four their story, the story of the actual hero who would save the world. That day was just another day where we all fought with our lives to eat. Block it all searcher. But unlike normal, at number 17's commands. A giant cloud in flames appeared. And the giant said. I am the archdevil searcher, Muspeliam's master. I will protect this place on my master's command, if you wish to proceed, you must defeat me. Dot my departed mother. They're saying if I want breakfast, I need to beat an archdevil. This disgusting world, 